Good evening, everybody, and sorry for the delay. We are a little bit behind upstairs. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start tonight's meeting with the roll call. Trustee Becerra? Here. Trustee Flanders? Here. Trustee Lyons? Here. Trustee Miller? Here. And Trustee Ruiz? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Chris? Second, Miller. Miller? Any questions? All those in favor? Eleonora? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 5 0. Mr. Torres, would you please do the Pledge of Allegiance for us? Okay, next out of uh, closed session, I've got two readouts. Uh, number one, in closed session, the board took action to accept the recommendation of an administrative hearing panel convened on April 25th, 2023 to expel student 2022-03 through June 30th, 2023 as prescribed in the finding of fact and presented to the Board of Education. Motion was made by Miller, second by Flanders. The vote was five to zero with Becerra, Flanders, Lyons, Miller, and Ruiz voting aye. The second item we have is potential litigation. The board voted in closed session regarding the settlement agreement for a student S2023-2024-35 to provide a free and appropriate public education to the student via special education and related services. Motion was by Mr. Becerra, seconded by Flanders. Vote was five to zero with Becerra, Flanders, Lyons, Miller, and Ruiz voting aye. And that's all out of closed session. Next up will be student reports. We'll start with Ryan from Brayland High School. Hello all. Let's dive right into all the incredible happenings at our school. First up, ASB. This past Tuesday, ASB hosted a blood drive for students and families to donate blood to donate to the UCI Health Center. One ounce of blood saves three, saves three lives, so thank you to everyone who donated, and huge thanks to our ASB Social Welfare Commissioners, Nia Luna, Jenna Adamick, Mrs. Valenti, and Mrs. DeJong for, their, for making this happen. Our last rally of the year will be on March 22nd. It will be safari-themed, with each class representing different animals, such as zebras and giraffes. Massive shout-out to our ASB PEP Commissioner, Timmy Carmen for all his hard work for putting on these excellent rallies each year. Next, we have Link Crew. Tomorrow, Link Crew will welcome the class of 2028 at the eighth grade visit to BOHS. The eighth graders will begin with an assembly in the gym where they will see performances from our arts programs and hear from counselors and administrators. Then Link Crew will tour our campus and expose them to the clubs and programs we have at BOHS. They will also host their first annual Spring Fling next Thursday, which is exclusive to our edu special education students. A massive shout out to Brielle Dembo, Emma Gledhill, Ms. Dietz, and Mrs. Givenrod for making this happen. Now on to sports. Yesterday, our swim team had a home meet against El Modena. Despite the heavy rain, our swimmers, our, our racers swam fast. Great job, Wildcats. This upcoming Thursday, track and field has their first league meet. The athletes have been training hard and progressing so early on in the season. Meets are occurring until May. Best of luck. The girls' softball team is currently in full swing. Last Tuesday, they played a game against Ocean View High School and won 7-5. to five. They also played against Canyon yesterday, but lost to a score of 2-12. to 12. Last Wednesday, boys volleyball played against Artesia High School and won 3-0. to zero. They also played on Thursday, but lost by a score of 1-3. to three. They have games until April, so go out and support our Wildcats. Now on to the arts. Tonight, play production is debuting their show, Alice in Wonderland. The show will take place tonight and tomorrow at 7 p.m. Come out and support our extraordinary performers. The jazz band is currently preparing for its festival season. You can catch them on March 16th at the Irvine High School Jazz Festival. Best of luck, Wildcats. The dance program is working hard on their dances for the upcoming rally and this year's final show. It is your last chance to support this year's dancers, and these shows will take place on March 28th and 29th. Finally, this past Saturday, the show choir attended our first competition at Burbank High School. Masquerade and Tiffany's received fourth place, while Spellbound re received third. 
Our next competition will be at Los Alamitos High School on March 16th. Additionally, they will be performing at the eighth grade visit tomorrow. Now for school morale. We finally found out who our students voted for for next year's ASB Executive Board. Our ASB president will be Will Stelmar. Our vice president will be Danica Coburn. Our secretary will be Abby Shin. Our treasurer will be to be, ter to be determined. And Elise Chu will, Chu will be succeeding me as ASB School Board representative. She's truly exceptional. They have already started making preparations for next year and have shown to be an effective board. I'm thrilled about what's in store for them. Finally, as I wrap up my final months here at Braylinda School District, I've been thinking about the great impact teachers have had on my life and development. In this room, I see many of my elementary school teachers and the teachers I currently have and think about all the great memories and the growth I've had. So I just wanna take this moment to show my gratitude and appreciation for all the teachers here and Braylinda commends you all. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for me? No questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Next up, I, although I almost want to keep you guys for last because I love, but I have to have you up. Mason and Christian. Brea Canyon High School. I know. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. Mason here. And Christian. And we're back with a quick update of all the latest health happenings taking place at Brea Canyon. On Tuesday, February 27th, Fullerton College Outreach Program came to Brea Canyon to help our, interest, our interested seniors apply to Fullerton College. 25 Coyotes ended up applying, and, and they will be getting an opportunity to, pers to participate in a jumpstart field trip start coming next week where they will tour the campus, create Fullerton College education plan, and sign a promise agreement to qualify for two years of community college for free. Shout out to Ms. Catherine and Ms. Kimberly from Fullerton College for supporting us. Currently at BCHS, we have a three by three volleyball tournament taking place. All students and staff have been enjoying the games during lunch. Mr. Horta is emceeing, and we have many teams that that are moving on to the semifinals. We'll let you know who the Brea Canyon Volleyball Champs are at the next board meeting. On Tuesday, March 5th, yours truly saved some lives. <laughs> and my fellow senior, Kyle Johnson, donated blood at Brea Linda's annual blood drive. I'm glad I was able to be a superhero. You are welcome. Shout out to Dr. Porter and BOUSD, uh, wait, BOUSD. B-O-H-S, ASB, and Ms. Fish and Ms. Molinado for allowing us to participate. With quarter three ending in two weeks, students are finalizing projects and earning extra credit to make sure we complete, uh, we complete quarter three as strong as possible. Some exciting events we're looking forward to include our quarter three awards assembly, our quarter three barbecue, and our quarter three field trip. We anticipate updating you all on the, board on the next board meeting in April. Although we said goodbye to Mr. Masley, who did a wonderful job supporting Bray Canyon for two months, we're extremely excited to welcome Mr. Grimaldo to the Coyote family. Mr. Grimaldo has already formed strong relationships with students and staff. We look forward to making all of our, we look forward to him making all of our Coyotes' dreams come true. Shout out to Mr. Grimaldo, the second go after you, of course, Mr. Champion. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for allowing us to share our updates. We wish you all a great <laughs> evening. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> no? <laughs> Any questions? Why? Just why? No. <laughs> no. No, just keep doing what you're doing, boys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And last but not least, Joanna and Dara, are you here somewhere in the audience? There you are. Bray Junior High. School board members, Dara and I are excited to share all the events that are happening this month. Our basketball season has started. Over 100 students came out for both girls and boys. Tryouts were held February 13th to February 22nd. And the first game of the season was this past Tuesday against Ladera Vista. Both teams brought home a victory. They will be having their next game on the 13th at home. The boys will play Fistler and the girls will scrimmage with St. Julian travel team. We will keep you posted on how our teams are doing as the season progresses. 
our Light the Night fundraiser, previously known as Pennies for Patients, which supports the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, started on February 26th and will continue until March 15th. Students and staff are encouraged to drop any spare change they have in a bucket found in their homeroom class. Our goal is to raise $3,000 for this worthy cause. Band and orchestra have their spring concert on March 5th and 6th. They are preparing for upcoming festivals. We will keep you posted on how they do. Choir attended their first competition last Friday, and show choir express won first place overall and won for best music and show. Starlight Express placed fourth overall. The next competition is March 14th. Science Olympiad also recently competed at a competition held at Cal State Fullerton. They placed 10th out of 28th for roller coaster making and 17th overall. Currently, they are thinking about what can be improved for next year's competition. We are excited to announce that we have a finalist, Raina Kim, who will be honored at the Chapman Holocaust Art and Writing Award Ceremony on March 15th for earning second place overall in the middle school art category. We are very proud of this accomplishment. Tomorrow, the eighth graders will take a field trip to the high school. They will be greeted with a pep rally, an elective fair, and learn about college requirements and how to prepare for, this, for their journey in high school. Everyone is pretty excited for this experience. The eighth grade class science, the eighth grade science honor classes will be participating in Physics Day at Knott's Berry Farm on March 14th from 8.30 to 2.30 p.m. This is an enriching experience and will align with the concepts currently being taught in science classes. On March 21st, NJHS will be hosting a Western themed dance from 3 to 5 p.m. in the cafeteria. There will be snacks, games, and a photo booth that students can participate in. March 21st and 22nd, BGAs will host the sixth graders on campus for a little rally, a campus tour, an elective fair, and a question and answer session. This time of the year is so exciting. Are there any questions? Okay, next up we have elementary showcase tonight. It's going to be Mariposa Elementary, Mr. Torres, and parents and friends of any of the students who will be up here, please come back here and take photographs if you like. You're all welcome behind us taking photographs. down. Good evening, board. Uh, thank you so much. I'd like to introduce my student council. Um, my teacher, my students, this is uh, Logan Carroll. He's going to get things started. Before we start, we want to mention that we are playing a bingo game. And so if we say one of the phrases, you guys can mark it down. And then once you get a bingo, you can say bingo, and then we'll give you guys a prize. Okay. 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 Now to get started. Hello, members of the school board, cabinet, parents, and fabulous, amazing, hardworking teachers. My list could go on and on, but we are limited on time. My name is Logan Samuels, and I'm one of Mariposa's presidents. And my name is Logan Smith, and I'm one of Mariposa's presidents. My John Wooden's pyramid of success is something we all strive to emulate at Mariposa. John Wooden was a famous basketball coach and player who believed in building not just great players, but great people, too. His pyramid teaches us how to be better students, friends, and all-around individuals. At Mariposa, we're all about following Coach Wooden's lead and building something special together. Hi, my name is Brooke. I am one of the student council's secretaries. And I'm Chloe, I'm one of the vice presidents. At Mariposa, fitness is a big deal. We show our fitness every year during our jogathon. This year, our theme was Super Mario Brothers. It was so much fun seeing everyone dressed up in different colors representing their grade levels. Not only is the jogathon super fun, but it's also for a great, great cause. We raise money for our school, which goes towards events, supplies, and programs. This year, we raised $65,000. Our students rocked it and won some awesome prizes, including a BMX show. Our school offers a variety of ways for a monarch to showcase their skills. Mariposa is packed with multiple musical programs, robotics, book club, art, digital art and design club, and more. 
Our robotics programs have been amazing this year. Not only have our teams made it to the finals multiple times, but our sixth grade team is the first elementary robotics team in the district to make our state championships, and they gave it their all. Shout out to Miss Miller for leading our outstanding choir. So far, they have sung at the Brea Tree Lighting and with the Brea Olinda Show Choir for the Winter Magic Showcase. She has directed tons of performances this year, and right now they are getting ready for the big spring show. It's going to be full of Disney magic. Let's not forget about our music program with Mrs. Wagner. Every Tuesday and Friday, we get to dive into music, whether we're learning piano for the first, first time or practicing for piano lessons. It's a blast. As you can see, fitness and skill are major parts of Mariposa's pyramid of success. With programs like the Jogathon and skill bu building activities, we're climbing higher and higher every day, reaching for the top together. Good evening, my name is Annette Ahn and I am one of the student council treasurers. And my name is Madison we, and I'm the student council secretary. To us, action means putting your best effort every day and helping others when they need it. During the holidays, we kept our tradition of helping others. We took action and donated gifts and necessities to those in need with our canned food drive, giving tree, and toys for tots. In November, students collected as many canned goods as possible. We knew that each item would count would help someone in need, so we turned it into a friendly class competition to make it more fun while still achieving our goal of helping others. We demonstrated compassion and generosity towards those who are less fortunate through our Giving Tree and Toys for Tots events. These traditions remind us of the true spirit of the holidays and how the strength of working together brings happiness and hope to others. Something new this year is that we partnered with Team Kids to showcase our dedication to creating inclusive and engaging activities for all. Our fifth and sixth graders collaborated with Team Kids organization to help raise money for the National Wildlife Center. Students created carnival games and posted by hands and held a student-led event that all grade levels could participate in. Cooperation is understanding that when we work together, we can achieve more than when we work alone. Students were able to work as a team to raise as as a team to raise enough money for our exciting B BMX show through our jogathon fundraising. There were high flying jumps, stunts, and tricks. Healthy Play is a social skills group that focuses on cooperation. They play games like Monster Tag, Cat and Mouse, and Chain Tag to improve teamwork, problem solving, and communication. The best part of their program is the novel study and the play they put on at the end of the year. This year, Mar this year Mariposa's Healthy Play will be James and the Giant Peach. I hope you could join us on May 22nd at 9.30 a.m. in our new NPR. In conclusion, action and cooperation aren't just words at Mariposa. It's what we do every day. Whether we're raising money or helping our community, we always, we always work together to make things better. Enthusiasm is all about making each day special, and at Mariposa, we've been bursting with excitement all year long. From early morning events to late night gatherings, we've been making memories families will cherish for years to come. To kick off the school year, we had a picnic and movie night featuring Yeste. It was so much fun to watch it with friends and family. In January, we hosted Muffins with Monarchs, where everyone came together for a delicious breakfast. Most recently, we had our spectacular Hawaiian-themed aloha dance, where families enjoyed music, pizza, crafts, and tons of fun. The excitement doesn't stop there. We have more fantastic events coming up, like our school carnival tomorrow from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. We can't wait to see you all there for a night of games, crafts, good food, and endless fun. You know, wins. I did too. At Mariposa, we're all about team spirit and celebrating together as a team. One way we show our team spirit is through our fun dress up days. We kicked off our year with a fall dress up day. Students stuck themselves out in fall colors and wore their favorite fall sports gear. Next, Halloween has brought all the creativity in us. We got to wear our costumes, had a costume parade, and a contest. November was a month of role reversal as teachers became students and students became teachers. Trust me, it was hilarious. 
in December, we brought back a dress-up favorite, our 12 days of holiday dress-up as we counted down to winter break. From sport your Santa hat and holiday vacation to fall la flannel, it was so much fun seeing everyone dressed up and getting into the festive spirit. Bingo. One of our favorite events so far this year. <laughs> One of our favorite events so far this year was our 100th day of school celebration. Each class decorated their door with 100 items that all went together. It was a creative way to, sh to work together and show off some school spirit. Students and teachers also dressed like they were 100 years old. <laughs> we are currently celebrating Read Across America Week. We can't wait to, wait, wait to wear our pajamas tomorrow to recognize Dr. Seuss's sleep book. This year, we've been boosting confidence through our dress-up days. Oh. In Mariposa's Pyramid of Success, confidence is a key building block towards personal best. Confidence comes from believing in yourself, not letting failure stop you, knowing you're making good decisions, and knowing what's right. This year, we've been boosting confidence through our dress-up days, especially during our college days. On the last Wednesday of each month, we get to wear our favorite college gear. It helps us feel confident and dream about our future. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> Wait, I called it. I'll go with you. Oh, yeah. Here, thanks. Guilty. I'm paying attention to the Oh, please. Excuse. <laughs> Lastly, every year we participate in Red Ribbon Week activities, dress up days, and pledge to live drug free. Through our participation, we are demonstrating our confidence and making healthy choices for ourselves. On Monday, we got our minds ready to learn. We dressed together so we could soar drug free forever. We got our minds set on a bright future, and then we gave ourselves a break and stayed in our pajamas all day. As you can see at Mariposa, we love dressing up, showing off our unique styles and promoting team spirit. And most importantly, we're all about boosting our confidence along the way. Hi, my name is Celeste and I'm the president of Mariposa for this part of the school year. The qualities of hard work and determination are the secret ingredients in Wooden's recipe for success. Our, our monarchs know that worthwhile results come from hard work and careful planning. We are determined to solve any problem that comes our way and we work hard to reach our goals. Today, tonight, I will be sharing with you the amazing things happening in our classrooms. Every other week, TK students and parent volunteer participate in meaningful play using our Building Blocks Social Studies curriculum. In our STEAM lab, they work together in small groups to learn about and build a community. Starting with blueprints, students work together collaboratively to build houses, banks, grocery stores, and much more. Block play provides such a rich learning environment where students can explore, experiment, and create, laying the foundation for various aspects of their development in a fun and engaging way. In kinder, our amazing kinders are determined to write their CVC words this year. In order to reach this goal, they are constantly practicing their writing skills in fun, different ways. In honor of President's Day, Ms. Fessler's class participated in a STEAM project in which they built a Lincoln Memorial out of Play-Doh and pasta. First grade has introduced the STEAM Challenge Centers, where students work together with different materials to solve real-world problems. This included the Stuffed Animal Olympics, where they brought their own stuffed animals to school to compete in their own mini version of the Olympics. Our first graders have also been very hard at work in our STEAM lab, where they have learned to program the Dash and Dot robots. Our second grade students have been hard at work in science. They have learned about camouflage and were tasked with camouflaging our beautiful mascot, the monarch, to protect it from its predators. In December, they engaged in their annual Holidays Around the World event as well as learned about the origins of the gingerbread house and were able to collaborate with each other to build one. Third grade also utilized our STEAM lab to compete in a robot challenge by working together to program our dash and dots. They also went on some great field trips like the Mount Sac Planetarium, the rocket launch, as well as the Kellogg house where they learned what it was like to live in colonial times.
fourth grade has been at hard at work in social studies and science. They participated in Walk Through California. They took a time travel machine to, to travel back in history to understand how our great state was made. In science, they built a, bu a bumper coaster track and used marbles to explore the concept of energy transfer. They also were tasked with creating an invention that included three energy transfers. The MathBot 3000 and the expandable TV were just a few of our favorites. Fifth grade have been currently t have been taking a dive into financial literacy this year. They are practicing. They are currently participating in the stock market game, which is a three-month stock market st simu simulation where students are engaged in a world of economics, investing, and personal finance. Students get to trade in real time and manage their own 100,000 investment portfolio over the course of a few months. They are competing with the entire Los Angeles region of elementary schools to see which student portfolios have the most equity in the end. On Valentine's Day, a group of fifth graders visited a local senior home and, don't, and delivered 68 handmade Valentine cards, along with chocolates for all the residents. Our monarchs mingled with the residents and were able to spread lots of love that day. Fifth grade classes also act as, are, act as friends and mentors to our kindergarten students through our Little Buddies program, where they engage in fun activities and learn from one another throughout the year. In sixth grade, we have, learning, we have been learning how to uh, showcase our knowledge in a variety of using a variety of platforms. We constructed a model of pyramid and detailing the highlights of ancient Egypt. Using our graphic design skills, we've used digital programs to create a science info infographic exploring various climate zones. We also conducted research to learn about a national park and presented our knowledge by creating a park brochure. Lastly, we made trading cards for early humans that helped improve our drawing and informational writing skills. As you can see, Mariposa's Pyramid of Success is all about building a strong foundation for our future. These building blocks are like pieces of a puzzle that every monarch needs to achieve their personal best with. Fitness, skill, action, cooperation, enthusiasm, confidence, team spirit, determination, and hard work. We can achieve anything we set our minds to. I hope you all enjoyed our presentation, and don't forget that we have a carnival happening tomorrow from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. We hope to see you there. Any questions? No, just a comment. Uh, you guys did a great job. I know it's really hard to speak in front of a whole room full of people, but you guys did a fantastic job sharing everything that's going on on your campus. I was just there last week, so I got to see the amazing things happening in person. So you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, board. Um, <clears throat> they did a great job. Um, and really just amazing stuff is happening at Mariposa. Um, and it starts with our mission. Um, if, if Throughout my presentation, and if you think back on what the kids were talking about, um, this is a whole child experience at Mariposa. It's about making sure that students are emotionally supported as well as academically. Um, we, we, use, we are growing that multi-tiered system of support. We, we focused a lot on that first tier this year, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in the presentation. Um, it's about the students, the staff, and the community working together. Uh, this year, we were able to um, create a partnership with a community partner with our robotics program, and I intend to support more of that. It's about working together. Um, there is also a team-led school. Anytime there's an opportunity to make a decision at Mariposa, the teachers and the staff are involved. Um, we are um, obviously doing some amazing things. Um, that stock market game is incredible. Um, it, these are the things that are preparing kids for lifelong learning and lifelong success in a future that is uncertain. Uh, they are uh, going to be getting in jobs and things that we can't imagine, um, and we're preparing for them for that um, with things like the John Wooden Pyramid of Success. Um, they are gonna be responsible and ethical members of this society. 
uh, and we do uh, we prepare for them for that by empowering them. Um, and you saw that, and you'll see more of that. Um, this is a photo of uh, our entire student body, which is pretty cute um, on Halloween. Um, we are, um, you know, just like all the other schools around us, uh, declining in enrollment, but um, we are hopeful uh, to uh, grow our school by doing amazing things and attracting families and students because of what we do. Um, there are quite a few combos this year, as you'll see. Um, but our teachers have been amazing at meeting the students' needs in every single one of those rooms. Um, we have um, a diverse group. Um, I, I, I love our demographics. Um, and uh, our staff and our community reach out and support each other. Um, when we notice that others uh, need help, we have an angel tree um, program during the holidays where families contribute. Um, and then the kids talked about our food drive. Uh, we did a thing this year called uh, Team Kids where we, um, the kids did something completely on their own without any parent help, without any teacher help. Um, and and um, so even knowing that they um, might not be able to give financially, they can do by service. And that's something that we need to instill in our kids. Uh, the Mariposa team, um, you know, we have a lot of people on campus, preschool, uh, we have after school care, we have uh, uh, two and a half days of uh, our PE. Um, they're there um, on uh, now this, this year, three days. Uh, one of those is a half day. Um, we have a, uh, a psychologist three days a week and a counselor two and a half days. And uh, we were doing great with those um, outstanding uh, staff. Our teachers and our staff um, bring it bring it every single day and they leave nothing um, uh, nothing is left uh, with with the amount that they give so I am so proud to be uh, part of such an incredible staff um, the highlights um, there's so much going on um, we moved to uh, art masters this year which has been going well um, and we have a steam lab with a makerspace, green screen, robotics. We have two different kinds of robotics programs after school. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, we have a millionaire's reading club, which is great, um, encouraging literacy at the school. And kids have really um, gotten competitive in trying to reach those goals. Um, the uh, student council is very active in, um, in supporting school spirit. Uh, we are inviting back for the second year the Korean Club, which starts on March 15th, um, working with students. And all students are welcome to that. It's about learning about each other and to appreciate our strengths. And so this is a great thing that our um, Korean Club at the high school is coming to share with the students um, at school at Mariposa. Um, the robotics um, has, has really become um, something to be proud of. Um, we have VEX Go. This is our second year offering that to third and fourth graders. Uh, we have about 60 students participating in that. VEX IQ, um, fifth and sixth grade, um, that number, oh, I'm sorry, is, um, is 48. And then we have the competitive teams. Uh, so we have 15 students competing in that. Uh, so we had four competitive teams um, that spent all day Saturdays. It's a commitment. Um, uh, competing and so um, they competed as many as four separate Saturdays uh, most recently at the state championship we're one of four um, element elementary schools that were not charters they weren't private schools or they weren't private organizations so one of four public schools at the state championship um, in Southern California is something to be proud of um, and we will continue to grow and grow with Brea Olinda as well in this area um, this year, we had the opportunity to partner with Ram Aerospace, which is just down on Tamarack. Um, an engineer came out and shared the design process. Um, and then the students wrote a paper um, and submitted it for a competition um, about how their design process correlates with something that is used just down the street in our community in the kind of jobs that are going to be available to them when they grow up. So this was a tremendous opportunity. Um, and I'm so grateful for our community partner. I look uh, forward to bringing more people into our incredible program because uh, robotics takes a lot of time, energy, and money. Um, and we want to make this not a Mariposa affair, but a community one. 
um, are academic indicators. Um, Mariposa is a, a, a high-performing school. Um, we uh, maintained, according to the California dashboard, um, as in ELA and mathematics, um, we're going to talk a little bit about our professional learning in a minute uh, with our teachers and how we're going to push that number forward. Compared um, to the state of California, Mariposa is just um, doing an incredible job. Uh, the state at 46, meeting and exceeding. Um, in Orange County, 57%, and here at Mariposa, we're at 68.68. Um, we work really hard for those numbers. Um, we uh, take um, our assessments seriously, and um, our, our teachers do phenomenal work supporting our students and making sure that they're getting um, a, a fantastic uh, instructional opportunity. Um, ELA, I'm sorry, um, it says ELA on top, it's mathematics. Um, the, the state level, 36, uh, 34.62 percent, meaning exceeding the uh, Orange County, 46, and Mariposa, 65. Again, um, this is tremendous. We again, th this is this is uh, maintaining. This is maintaining over um, several years. Um, I will share with you what that looks like um, from 2015. So think about COVID. We've got a couple years missing in there, um, and it, that green we want to see growing. Um, but if you notice, after 2019, um, in ELA, no movement. Um, in mathematics, uh, from 2019 to 2022, very little difference. Um, but we are seeing uh, the consequences of that experience slowly. Um, it is not something that happened all at once. And so we have a lot of work to do, and we are doing that work. Um, I'll share with you before I get to that. Um, our iReady data, this is... Um, the most current and accurate. This is um, on par with what we saw last year. Um, we uh, have grown um, substantially, and um, if these numbers are similar to what we um, did last year, we'll be looking at about 76 to 78 percent students um, early to above grade level, um, and the other areas uh, shrinking from the red um, sections, which is what we want to see. Um, in math, um, similar, more work to do, 49% um, early to above grade level. And again, um, if this is on par with what we did last year, we'll be looking at something in the low 60s um, percentage-wise for mathematics and then uh, declining uh, in the red areas, which is, again, what we want to see. Um, there are, um, the work is about tier one instruction. Um, and so um, I'll get to that after LPAC. Uh, almost double with the state score on LPAC. We um, reclassified, are reclassifying 10 students um, out of a very small number of students. So that is, that is incredible. We are down to um, about like 28 um, English learners. Uh, that does not mean that they are not uh, extremely important and part of the, this, you know, what we consider when we make decisions. Um, this is one of those groups um, that falls into um, the support that we provide with um, with universal design for learning. Um, our suspension rate, very low. Um, I attribute it, again, this to um, teachers setting the standard uh, of what uh, behavior is acceptable. Um, restorative practices, uh, John Wooden's pyramid of success, and the counselor that you, you have provided as a board. Um, these are the things that allow us to um, to make use of our instructional time and not dealing with uh, behavioral challenges. So we do our best. Um, we are just like any elementary school, and kids are learning. And one of the ways that they learn is, um, is with behavior. Um, attendance, this is, this is our, our tough area. Um, we have, uh, compared to state, 24%. Um, we're at 10%. Um, and we maintained, uh, which is why we're in the orange. Um, the, you know, the state has a much higher percentage of chronically absent students. Um, this is being worked on. Um, uh, Baldwin uh, uh, are, who is uh, in charge of the new um, program that is mailing out those letters to parents and making sure that we're following up um, on chronically absent students. And, and I do anticipate that our, uh, our numbers will be better next year. Um, this is just one of those things that is such a challenge for schools uh, post-COVID 
Um, we, we, we just are, are dealing with the struggle of getting kids in the seats, um, but we are making great efforts. Um, how we support the students. Um, we, we do a lot of, um, you know, uh, being pro, uh, proactive about making sure our students are getting what they need socially and emotionally. Um, we have uh, small groups in classrooms, cooperative groups. We have a reading specialist. Um, our, our EL para is phenomenal. Um, the counselor with the social emotional supports, uh, and then again, um, uh, practicing those, those um, John Wooden restorative practices, and then our acronym store, which is PBIS. Um, and we've stepped that up this year. Um, where we are meeting uh, monthly, talking about it. This is the first year where we had a PBIS reboot in January, anticipating that student uh, behaviors time to fall off a little bit after, after that and need that reminder. Uh, we focused on some uh, key elements for the first four weeks of January, and um, I think it was successful. We've, we've seen um, some good stuff out of our kiddos. Our professional learning has uh, been focused on uh, Universal Design for Learning this year, just most recently, the teachers collaborated in creating a, a Google slideshow uh, for the entire staff. These are slides from that where we talked and learned about um, self-regulation. Uh, and uh, that is a key part of Universal Design for Learning. Um, and it's also a great way to support our students socially and emotionally. Um, these were ideas that came from our teachers. Uh, they are collaborating on a, a grade level and as a site-wide uh, group um, ideas, and we'll continue to do so as we develop our skills with uh, Universal Design for Learning. So what's going well, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we're, we're finally getting into um, some depth with Universal Design for Learning. Um, and we just had an iReady training that was very valuable. Uh, and, um, you know, we're, we're, we have uh, great family nights. Um, I'm looking forward to growing our PTA, uh, PTO. Um, uh, yes, oh boy. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, our, our PTO um, is, it, things, things are in, in, in transition right now, so it's, it's interesting, but um, I'm looking forward to becoming more empowered um, in owning our own uh, organization and, and uh, getting more families um, there. Our NPR, uh, our, our, our stuff that is coming our way, our um, new playground, uh, things of that nature. We're really um, looking forward to making the school, and thanks to you, the board, uh, for allowing us to do the summer refresh with new desks and carpet. The, the teachers, um, the staff, the kids um, are really going to be excited about it when, when it, it comes to fruition. Um, next, um, focusing on that attendance, um, working with wigs. Um, and uh, we met with Gabe uh, from the Covey um, uh, company, and they uh, are, we're, we're talking about bringing it down to the kindergarten level where kids draw pictures of their goals and are goal oriented. Um, attendance, we're reaching out to those families and communicating to them how uh, important it is that their kids are there every day, uh, and we'll continue to make improvement in that area. Um, we need to work on making sure that we have tier two supports. Um, and being creative uh, and, and using um, the resources that we have available to do that. And we're, we're looking forward to our playground. Um, there's a picture of, of what it's gonna look like and I think our kids are gonna be pretty psyched to play on it. Um, are there any questions? Yeah? Um, are you, questions, comments? Um, first off, my multitask meter was off the charts. Um, I'm obviously not able to do all of these things at the same time, so, but it was a lot of fun, the bingo, so thank you, students, you did a great job. Um, and you did, uh, Coach Wooden, I think he would be very proud of what the Monarch version of his pyramid looks like, so really appreciate that. Um, you have some, maybe some wind beneath the wings people that um, we didn't hear their names yet, so teacher advisors back there, I think. Um, who did a lot of this yes. as well. So maybe Daniel we Acklin them. and Daniel Busso are tremendous uh, supporters. So can we give them a hand really quick yeah. for that? There's never enough time to do all of those things. And we want to make sure we get a photo, too, of them. We kind of got out of order. I don't know how we usually do that. So 
Um, and then I would just, I was really interested and anxious to hear about the, the community partnership that you reached out or somehow that just happened um, os yeah. like osmosis and that's really a benefit for us. So thank you for Ram doing that with you and whoever took the charge in leading that. I really appreciate that. I think our community loves to get involved with our kids. So, and we need them to know what you're doing up the street. So that's really super, thank you. I know the other thing is, I know in all of our district, we have a lot of combos, but you guys, um, have quite a few and so we recognize that that takes a lot more for the teaching staff and we appreciate the extra extra effort that it takes to do that so um, I just wanted to say I think you're doing a great job and I mean seeing your numbers is fantastic and the and the progress you guys are making is is really great thank you Chris yeah. Um, I'd like to know how you have a, over 120 kids in robotics. You're not meeting all at one day. So we, no, we don't. We do two work? sessions. We do a first session. So um, with the VEX Go, it's a much shorter program, so six weeks. Um, there's two sessions. And then for VEX IQ, we do a fall and a spring. So we split that up. And if we needed to split it up three ways, we'd do it that way. Um, we will not turn around, turn, turn kids away from uh, this kind of opportunity because it's the kind of opportunity that propels students into engineering, uh, which I'm pretty sure one of our competitive team uh, kids is absolutely going to do. All right, thank you. Okay. Absolutely, I love my alma mater, Mariposa. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, it, what's funny is, what are you? Our third or fourth school? Third school? I've lost track. Third, and. Uh, the data just shows what's going on, right? And you have a lot to be proud of. It, it bums me out that, that Cal I want to say this correctly, that California doesn't represent Brea because every single one of you who presented had, it's like we're not even in the same state as wherever this, these other numbers come from. So, I mean, we're, we have to just kind of pump that up and make that known. That's like a really big deal. And, um, so I'm really proud of you and your school. Um, you've been wanting to do the robotics <laughs> since it's I a met passion. you. I yeah. know, and then COVID hit, and then it kind of stopped, uh, and then yeah. you got back. So I'm so excited that it grew yeah. so much after, yeah. and that you've been able to partner, like you said, with an aerospace company. That's awesome. Yeah, so, that was, I, you know what? I just uh, kind of went through the phone book and, um, and found him and reached out to him pre before COVID, and they were going to come out. And I was getting, I was getting the grant, and I was getting the robotics, and they had this plan, and uh, mm -hmm. that kind of fell apart. But um, I reached back out after we got our, uh, you know, got our bearing, and um, they're excited about being a partner with us yeah. for as long as they, you know, as long as our program exists. So and um, that's for exciting. other schools. I mean, we have 13 or 14 aerospace companies in Brea. It's weird, but you know, <laughs> when you drive around, and you're like, oh, that, oh, that's been here forever. It's really strange, so we should utilize them. So good for you yeah. on, on the phone book thing. Um, it, my tough question, I think, I had some questions um, from parents, not at Mariposa, but in general, here and there, about UDL. Yes. And um, you touched on it, so I want to ask you, how are you communicating what that looks like in a classroom with parents? <laughs> With parents, so that, that will be um, definitely a, a coffee with the principal topic, but um, understanding that um, we are doing work to um, teach students that might get forgotten sometimes, right? Those hard to teach students, um, they are um, the students that we are targeting with that um, and keeping in mind with our instruction and communicating to parents, um, talking about what it is at PTA meetings, um, I talked about it with our school site council, um, our family organizations, um, and it, it, it would be warranted to talk about it in our newsletters, but those things are so packed, but certainly knowing about what sort of instructional practices are occurring. As we develop those strategies, those conversations will become more common. Okay, good to know. That's just came to my forefront yeah. lately. So thank you, great job. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Rick. Um, why don't you bring your kids and your advisors down here for a picture? Sounds good. Perfect. All right, right you're going to go up there and stand right in front of me. Thanks. Sorry. 
my chair was moved. <laughs> Okay. I think so. Thank you, sir. And it looks like they drew them, doesn't it? And they're out. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and continue the meeting. Let me go next to uh, recognitions, Brenda. Thank you very much, President Ruiz. The first recognition we have tonight is National Library Week, and that is recognized April 7th through 13th. It was first sponsored in 1958, and it is a national observance sponsored by the American Library Association and libraries across the United States each April. This year's event is scheduled, as I said, from the 7th through 13th with a the theme of Ready, Set, Library, which promotes the idea that in our always online world, Libraries gives us a green light to something truly special, a place to connect with others to learn and focus on what matters most. We encourage everyone to visit their library in person to connect with new worlds through books, technology, multimedia content, and educational programs. And I know it's fun always visiting the school sites and seeing what the library media techs and staff has done to transform their library. The second recognition tonight before we get to Brea Ed Foundation is that of Public School Volunteer Week, and we know it takes a village. We love our volunteers in our schools with any event that we have going on to support our students. But every April, it's a yearly opportunity for schools and families to honor and highlight the powerful contributions parents and caregivers provide at school and home to support students' success. This year, we honor our school volunteers the week of April 22nd, and we really do thank our volunteers for dedicating their time to our schools and district. Their work is definitely appreciated. Okay, now I'm going to call up Diana Maldonado with Brea Ed Foundation. I think Rick Clough and the team is here. Come on down. And we have some teacher grants to be distributed this evening to seven teachers. And I'm going to let Diana and Rick take over the presentation. So thank you. This never gets easier. <laughs> Good evening, board members and cabinet. Tonight, we would like to present a Donors Choose certificate to seven teachers whose projects will be funded by the Bray Education Foundation. Uh, this is our first year, and we decided to fund projects from BOUSD teachers and staff. We hope to do this twice a year, spring and fall. Our ability to support depends on, on funds, on depends on how much we can raise through our golf tournament, uh, annual campaign, and other fundraisers. By the way, um, golf tournament's June 3rd, just in case. Um, we would like to invite those teachers to please join us. Ms. Mamunia, the seven I teachers that we have. Do you want me to read their names? I, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Tina Casillas from Falcon, Darlene Demelia from Falcon, Jacqueline Torres Falcon, Rocio Anguingua, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, from Falcon, Hilary Yerkes, Olinda, Tammy O'Rourke, Aravista, and Denise Palcheski from Brady Junior High. Uh, before we present these certificates, teachers, we would like to thank you for all your hard work and dedication. It definitely does not go unnoticed, and we appreciate you. And of course, whenever I come to a board meeting, we're always giving away money. So if you see me in the audience, we're probably giving away money, right? So usually our foundation reaches out to schools and, and teachers through a grant project. And usually we take grant applications. This year we've decided that instead of doing the grant program, what we're going to start doing is we're gonna search for the teachers in the district to put things up on donors choose. And we're gonna select those teachers from there and we're gonna fund their, their projects. And so, that's how we came to this conclusion on the seven teachers that we located on Donors Choose. The first one is Ms. Casilla. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Diamia. <laughs> Ms. Torres. I'm going to try on this one. Ms. Aguaniga. Miss Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. 
Yorkish, sorry. <laughs> Miss O'Rourke. And is it Miss Palkowski? Did I get it right? Miss <laughs> Powell. So this was our spring funding. Um, our next one will be fall. So our fall funding will also be through Donors Choose. Um, so if teachers, if you'd like your projects to be considered for funding, please have your projects um, on Donors Choose by September 1st. Is there anything you guys want? Are you guys good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're not that lucky. Don't worry. It's all over here for a nice big photo of all oh, of you okay. guys. Okay. Cool. What's that? Picture. Yep. Including Mrs. O'Rourke. We have to do the. Oh, we'll go that way. There. We can take a picture over <laughs> Tammy picture right over there. Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just get the yeses. Okay. Come on, Diana, get in there. Shirley, get in there. Shirley, get in there. Thank you, guys. Moving on to the next, the community report for the PTA, PTO. Is there any more PTAs or is it all PTO? Yeah, we're all PTOs. Okay, so then I'll scratch that out. PTO. <laughs> Danny? Yep. We are officially all PTOs now. No more PTA. Woo! Woo! Sorry. Um, so yes, this is me. I am Danny Rep, the PTO Council President. Um, our most recent council meeting was held January 23rd, and here are some of the PTO-sponsored happenings at our schools. At Mariposa, they had a family aloha night in February, which was a success and had a great turnout. Tomorrow is, as they said, the students said, Mariposa Candyland Carnival. April 12th, they have family bingo night. They are apparently huge bingo fans at Mariposa. And April 15th is their spring book fair. That's when it begins. At Falcon, they have their Jogathon prize events underway. The kids loved the inflatable cash cube that they were able to exchange for sore cards or cards and um, shop at the, I'm sorry, sore, sore cards. There we go. And shop at the sore cart. Um, spring book fair for them begins March 11th and open house is March 14th and that way families can shop at the book fair while they're at the open house. They just unveiled a new after school program called All Things Science in all capital letters and first session filled immediately so they have had to since open another session and then they have their BMX assembly at the end of the month. At Laurel March 4th was their Read Across America kickoff event, and March 15th is their Jogathon. March 18th is their BMX assembly. At Country Hills, Donuts for Darlings was held Friday, February 23rd, and Muffins and Muffel Muscles will be held on Friday, March 29th, which is obviously an event dedicated solely to me. <laughs> Um, so, um, both events allow students to bring a loved one to enjoy breakfast, juice, and coffee before school. And then we have our open house coming up on March 20th, which is also during the week of our school book fair, so that, again, the families can join um, and shop during the open house. Aero Vista. Their Jogathon is March 15th, and PTO is providing shirts for all of their students, teachers, and all of their helpers at the school. Spring Book Fair for them is on uh, March 25th. That's when it begins. An open house is coming up. And for theirs, PTO is setting up a, an art gallery where each of the students will be able to display one of their art pieces that they've created during Art Masters. 
At Olinda, Jogathon was delayed twice due to the rain, but it will finally happen this Monday, March 11th. Adding to their tile art installation on campus, they are now allowing new Olinda families to be able to decorate a family tile and leave their mark on Olinda. And they are planning and prepping for their upcoming events. They have a big family fun night coming up, their spring book fair, and a steam night. At Brea Junior High, they were the final PTA unit to disband. Um, and that just happened on Monday. And they are currently working on baskets for silent auction for an open house that they are, or their open house coming up. And they are seeking items from local businesses, if anybody is interested. Um, as for the council, we are now all PTOs. And um, so this is the PTO council now. And we are super duper excited about that. We have all the units are off and running. Insurance is done. 501c3 paperwork is all submitted. All the bylaws are written. Um, so we are good to go. And um, we just have a really awesome council that is very, very excited to get all of our schools together, get all of the executive boards together. Um, Kimberly Summer, it wants to do a a mixer for parents at all of the schools to get everybody together. Um, I mean, we just have everybody's like super duper excited to get our individual PTO units to come together to do more things to get our community all as one. Um, so I'm very excited about this, and I think you all should be too. So um, that's all I got. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody? No? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have association reports, starting off with President Glenda Bartell of BODA. Good evening, board. I'm proud to be here to report on behalf of our 276 BODA members. As BODA president, I continue to represent our educators in a multitude of ways every single day, which means continuing to work with our district administration even through the tense climate that we are currently in. As I stated in my last association report two weeks ago, BODA and the BOUSD have partnered together for many years and continuously reached compromises that benefit all stakeholders. Any member of the executive cabinet will tell you that they know to their very core that BODA is always in support of what is best for students and the Brea community. That's true of us as an association, and it's true of every single teacher in our district. You can all attest that this is evident in the compassion that they show for our students, the hours upon hours of unpaid hours they spend for the good of their students, and the money that they spend out of their own pockets so that their students can have a welcoming and effective learning environment. Teachers are the educational bridge to the future. School cultures are built with consistent care each day by classroom teachers. Caring and committed educators deserve respectful pay and benefits. It's time that the district expressed their gratitude for our educators by compensating us fairly. BODA has compromised on salary for too long. Even this year at the bargaining table, BODA cut their initial proposal in half yet the district did not budge from theirs. We're only divided by 1.75%. Someone just yesterday asked me, why all this for just 1.75%? My response was, we see it the other way around. Why not just 1.75%? Once again, <laughs> once again, we're not asking anything absurd, we're simply asking for what is fair. Once again, Brea Olinda educators are some of the lowest paid in the region. Once again, our students deserve the best, but you can't put students first if you put teachers last. Have you looked at the salary schedules of our surrounding districts? Our members have. Many of them have strongly considered going elsewhere. Many already have. Our high school teachers can go next door to Fullerton Joint and make 14,245 more yearly. All of our teachers can go to our Placentia Yorba Linda or Saddleback Unified and make $8,437 more yearly. Our elementary teachers can go to Westminster School District and make $13,225 more yearly. Our teachers can go to Garden Grove or Tustin Unified and make $11,982 more yearly. 
our teachers can go to Santa Ana Unified and make 10,195 more yearly. If our teachers go to Irvine or Newport Mesa Unified, they can make 6,434 more yearly. And if our teachers go to Los Alamitos Unified, they can make $21,133 more yearly. BOTA's 4% offer is a conservative yet fair compromise for both sides. BOTA cannot accept falling further behind surrounding districts. Revenue is intended to reach students and educators. It's not acceptable that almost half of the district's offer is comprised of a one-time bonus. After all the compromises that teachers in this district have made, many of them to their own detriment, it's time that the districts step up. Last week, one of our longtime veteran teachers shared with me a very respectfully written email that he sent to Superintendent Leon. He ended with, our BOTA leadership only strenuously argues when they know they are in the right. He was 100% correct. You all know us well enough to know that it's rare that we stand so firmly on an issue. We deserve this modest raise of 4% and much, much more. I implore you to do what is right. What's good for teachers is good for students and 4% is fair. Thank you. Okay, next we have CSEA President Lisa Santos. Good evening. I'm Lisa Santos. I represent the classified uh, employees of this district. Um, today, our union and BOUSD reached an agreement which supports all classified employees. We continue to support our teachers and appreciate this collaborative, respectful process and dedication to meeting the needs with the cost of living in infl um, inflation. United, we are proud to be respectful of all employees in this district who work hard to serve our community and students. This respect means supporting each other. In, in closing, I'd like to say that classified employees are a unique group here in the district. We're different than uh, classified employees of other districts in which our hard work and our job description that we are hired through, we do much more. We uh, collaborate uh, with teachers, we help teachers, we work together with the district, students. So classified employees, we are encompass everything every day. So with our longevity that we're here, our classified employees have a, um, a stake in the community, in the school, and as parents, they send their children here. They're homeowners, they're renters, um, but they are dedicated to serving the students and community here in Brea. One of the long-serving classified employees that we want to celebrate is Joanne Warren. She was a 36-year um, classified employee. She was a CDS worker. Um, who passed away last week, and so we would like to acknowledge all of the work that she did working with children. Um, we also would like to acknowledge that Pablo Nava, who was a groundsman who retired a year and a half ago, he also passed away. He served this district in um, the capacity of making every uh, school, every site, beautiful as a groundsman and he will be missed he was here about 26 years and so we will miss him again classified employees are very essential here in the district we're hard working we we work tirelessly and again we are governed by our job descriptions and the fact that we are hourly employees on a fixed income and so the agreement that we have reached today, we feel as a group, has helped our classified employees through this hard time. Uh, we will continue to strive for more, um, and we will continue to 
acknowledge that the teachers are here and the th what they need. And so um, as a group, classified says thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Next up, uh, board committee reports, starting with Chris, yeah. ROP. So ROP spring site visits have begun uh, two weeks ago. Well, let me back up. So one of the things that ROP does, which I really enjoy, is with the different pathways from each of one of the um, realms of, of CTE, they do site visits throughout all of their districts, but they also invite stakeholders. So community members, businesses that they can partner with, things like that. And so uh, I attended the Design Visual Media Arts Pathway, um, which we have a program at Braylinda High School. And so um, it was nice, we went and visited um, two high schools in Placentia or Belinda and then came over to Brea. Um, and again, it's nice because ROP brings potential businesses that could partner with us and our students. Um, so it was nice to be there to answer questions specifically about BOHS and our programs and um, other CTE opportunities. Uh, and in two weeks, we are holding interviews for the Celebration of Student Success um, Awards and we have one BOHS student who is up for the award. And so um, I'm serving on the panel along with some other board members and so it'll be nice to see our representation on that. Um, and then I'm doing two more sets of site visits, one at the end of the month. Um, I forget which pathway it's for, but next month I'm going to go and visit all of their education and child development pathways, which is my favorite. Um, so it's nice to be able to go out and see what other districts are doing. Um, and see how awesome that our programs are in alignment with them. So that's ROP. Thanks, Chris. Next, we'll have Carrie with the um, OSSBA and the Region oh, 15 and, delegate. And, uh, Orange, Orange County School Board Association, I have a nada. Okay. But um, for the delegate assembly. So just to give context to the room, because I'm going to ask a favor of everybody in the room. Um, the, the, um, CSBA is California School Board Association, and that is, I've said it before, but we've never had an audience when I've said it before. <laughs> but um, that is something that dist uh, several districts um, have a delegate that advocates for their district. And in Orange County, there's, I think, like 20 of us or less, and we happen to have two. Dina just got on, yay, Dina. Yay. And um, I've been on, um, I forget, five years or something like that. And we do a ton of advocacy for just for Brea. So, you know, no one knows who Brea is in all of Southern, or all of California. There's 280 of us. So I'm telling you this because it mat it's gonna matter to you tonight. Here's why. So first, this is for the board members. Um, you've probably all gotten the email asking us to sign up for the legislative um, action week next week. Has anyone had a chance to do it or interested in doing it? Not yet. Okay, so we all need to do it. And I signed up today. It's not too late. It says March 1st, but it's free and you can do it. And what that means is that um, our school board members will be on a Zoom with our legislators. And um, super important, we'll get together on what we're going to talk about. I wonder what we're going to talk about. Mm, funding, um, being the lowest funded district, probably will come up, as it always does. Um, but we need, right now, in this moment that we are here together, we need to do it together. So here's what I'm gonna ask you guys. Um, it, back in uh, May, when I was at the Delegate Assembly in Sacramento, we, and Rick, I'm gonna mess up all the numbers. That's not my thing, but you can correct me. Um, the governor was threatening um, to cut our mental health money that we all just got after COVID by 50%. 50%? Sure. So, um, <laughs> um, and um, it was a really big deal. Brenda sent me notes, you sent me notes for the budget. We got together first and I went to Sacramento and we, we, before I got there, oh no, no, we all were asked to email the governor. It, it didn't even matter what the email said, honestly. It's a form e email, CSBA sent it out to us. We clicked it, we signed our name as a board member. Probably everyone here did it. Um, and then they didn't cut, they cut, he always cuts. He cut it by less, he cut it by like 25%. Okay, I got that one right. So, um, 
So then Dina, fast forward to December, and Dina and I were at um, San Francisco for the Delegate Assembly. And the president of CSBA got up with the lawyer and said, oh my gosh, you made a difference with the actual governor, which I feel like is useless, honestly. Sorry, I said that out loud. Um, but what happened is the governor has like a signing day, and he signs away all the stuff he's cutting, and apparently it's a real day. And he opened the door to his office, and the members of uh, the CSBA president was standing there, and he said, your delegates blew up my email with the mental health cuts, so I'm not cutting like I was going to. And he said, ah, oh, CSBA is just like in my way. I couldn't even get to any other email. There's only 280 of us. There are 200 and, what did you say, Glenda? Don't say it out loud because I'm not supposed to talk to the audience. 200-ish, 300. There's 500 employees and there's a ton of parents. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to Legislative Day next week and tell them what, what troubles we're in here. And it's not about anyone in here deserving it because you all deserve everything. I'm going to cry. Everything. You want me to take over? <laughs> okay, because I'm angry. I'm angry at the state. But, and it isn't an excuse and it isn't to a cop out, but we can do this together. Five of us advocate like you have no idea what we do with the state. And they're like, Brea, who? But if 280 people can change the whole state of California's budget when it comes to mental health, why can't we blow up his inbox with, Brea needs help? Or, you. <laughs> Okay, sorry, you could yell at me in a minute. <laughs> but I just, I will help you. Glenda, Noel, Lisa, you guys can organize it so that all your people have to do is click a button and sign their name from Brea. But we can try. I don't know why we can't try. So there's an idea. I'm just saying. So that was my report that ended up into an emotional like moment. But um, that's all. <laughs> I do have more to say. We're not allowed to talk. Um, we're not not allowed, but we are, you guys will get to speak and it's your turn to speak and we don't speak back and we respect that and it doesn't mean we don't care. Um, and at the end, if we want to comment, we haven't been, um, I do have some comments to make. I'll try not to cry through them later. But aside from this, this is something we can do though. So I'm hoping that you help me help you for next week during the leg legislative action week. I would love them to know who we are when we, when we log in next week. So that's all I got. Um, Don't cry. I'm not going to cry. Um, I'm cold-hearted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> after last, the last board meeting, I actually emailed Josh Newman. I know there was a representative here last time, which I do appreciate. We have already met with three different politicians in regards to funding for the last year or so. You can look at my social media. I post everything that I ever do. So this isn't a new problem for us. It's just, you know, it's, it's just really rough times. And so... I didn't really appreciate his reply back. He said, yeah, I, I understand, and it's going to get worse, is what he said. And I asked for help. How can we educate the legislature? Because in San Francisco, we had a working lunch during that conference, and they brought up, educate the legislature. They don't necessarily know what education is. We're supposed to be the experts, so educate them. So I feel like Brea, Brenda has done a great job. We, Rick has met with them. We've all met with them, and so it's like we're not we're not giving up, but it is a really, really hard fight. And exactly what Carrie is saying, the five of us or the 10 of us in this room, we can't do it by ourselves because they're not even listening to us. But maybe the email plan is a great plan. Um, and then I also reached out to our CSBA contact asking about explaining funding. Because when I sat in the seat for the first time, I didn't understand it. And I still, I'm constantly learning. From last meeting to this meeting, I've gotten even better because I have spent hours trying to learn it just to explain the basics. So I do, we, we have some information if anybody wants it. I've given it to parents, you know, today. It's, it's, it's comparing and it's frustrating. I mean, it's black and white, it's right there. There's no hidden costs, there's nothing. It's literally showing how unfair the funding is. And we're the minority in our state for this. You know, a lot of people get so much money, they don't know how to spend it. And we don't have that problem. And so as a delegate and just a board member, it's, it, we're willing to put in the work. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not easy sitting here knowing that you guys are all upset, you know? And so it's, it's not by our, you know, 
not without trying. Like, we're not giving up. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. No tears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dina. All right, um, next is BEF. Well, they did a good job on their own, but I'll just remind everyone, June 3rd, golf tournament, go online, sign up now. And then um, nothing for the nominating committee to Orange County, and last but not least, Eleonora. Okay, so I have a really short report tonight, and I just, want to, I just wanted to say that um, in regards to BOHS, uh, many students, including myself, are very excited to hear that a new law elective is going to be offered at BOHS next year. And because there's such a growing interest among students in pursuing careers in the legal profession, I think that this is going to be such an amazing opportunity um, for students across campus to learn more about um, law and just the inner workings of all that. Um, and then last thing, um, as for our elementary schools, I have an upcoming visit at Falcon Elementary next Wednesday that I'm really looking forward to. And I'll be visiting Falcon Student Council, which is something I haven't done before, during one of their lunch meetings. So I'm really excited to hear what they have to say. Thanks, Eleanor. Next up, superintendent report. No, I, I thought you were giving me a, a hint, so I know we're all struggling with some form of head cold. I, I, I hope I'm not doing that. So good evening, board and um, staff in the audience. It's great to see everyone here. Our mission is that we are a devoted educational community that develops our students to become local and global influencers through dynamic learning experiences. And the core value I'd like to highlight tonight is that of inspiration. And we definitely saw that throughout Mariposa's school showcase tonight. So I really appreciated um, everything that the students and staff and Rick Torres had to share. But inspiration is that we create experiences that spark the love of learning within our school community. As Lisa shared with you this, uh, earlier this evening, we are pleased to share that we have successfully reached a tentative agreement on all topics open during the term of negotiations with CSEA. It's a lot of work for both sides. It requires commitment to open, com open communication, a lot of collaboration, a lot of um, energy and efforts working through tough issues. There's a lot of budgetary challenges and uncertainties when you lose over 3% of your projected COLA mid-negotiation season, it creates a lot of challenges. Um, more information will be shared in upcoming meetings, but it is a great outcome for both CSEA employees, CSEA um, members and the district. Um, that's not without saying, you know, our, our conversations with BOTA will be ongoing, are ongoing. We've set a date to continue that conversation, and I know all parties are equally invested in arriving at a settlement, so um, the efforts do not go unnoticed. It, it's tough to negotiate, especially with um, th this climate we're in at the state level. But I'm going to share a little celebration tonight. I'm hoping that the Olinda High School Wildcat online newspaper, I hope they're selected as the online pacemaker award from the National Scholastic Press Association. So our Wildcat, our online Wildcat newspaper is phenomenal. You know, they have a great advisor, great student writers, and I always look forward to reading the articles that, that, um, that the students produce. The winners will be announced in April, so hopefully before our next board meeting so we can share that with you, but students do a great job. So looking forward to that accolade coming up. Our district also recently participated in the 8K on February 25th. I saw many um, students here, so it was definitely a fun morning to spend with our students and a ton of runners and handing out awards, but that was the 25th. And uh, just such a great fundraiser for the high school music and choir programs. We have the Brea Best Meet this weekend, but um, you know, Paul asked me to look into the rain that has uh, come upon our city, so we're going to be doing that and we'll get back, so we'll assess those fields. But if the fields look good, we will have our, our best meet on Saturday the 9th. And then as our junior high students shared, we do have an eighth grade visit to the high school this Friday the 8th. And then before you know it, it'll be spring break, April 1st through 5th, and all schools will be closed. I also wanted to share in my report this evening um, with the board and those who are here tonight, just some reflections on serving our district, especially in these challenging times that test our resilience, our commitment to our shared values and to each other. 
When I was newly hired at BOUSD seven years ago, I quickly learned the power of relationships and their importance in our tight-knit community. It doesn't mean that the power of relationships weren't present in my other districts, but certainly when you step onto any campus or into the district office, when you serve in our 12 square miles and our 10 schools, the power of relationships is present. At the core of our district's mission and values is a commitment to not only provide exceptional education to our students, but also to create an environment where every member of our team feels valued, supported, and recognized. This commitment goes beyond financial compensation. It is about creating a culture where we all feel part of something bigger than ourselves, where our contributions matter and are recognized in a myriad of ways. In our journey together, we will inevitably face differences of opinion and challenges that could strain relationships with our, within our school community. It is in these moments that our shared values become our guiding light. Embracing our differences, navigating disagreements with respect and empathy, and finding common ground are essential skills that will enable us to strengthen our community rather than divide it. It is vital that we remember the strength of our relationships and the bonds we have built over the years, which are the foundation of our collective success. I have always appreciated and welcomed the opportunity to collaborate with our association team members with the goal of arriving at settlements and solutions that address the concerns and needs of all parties. This time in our history together is no different. As we continue to engage in conversations, we can agree that, school, that the school funding model is broken. When our district receives approximately 86% of the statewide LCFF average, that is a profound problem. Our district students and staff are worth more. As we move forward, let us remember that our greatest strength lies in our unity and shared commitment to making the Brea Olinda Unified School District a place where every challenge is met with collective wisdom and where every success is celebrated as a testament to our shared dedication to excellence. It is a commitment I will endeavor to live up to every day as your superintendent, and I hope those who have shared that commitment with me over the years will continue to do so. It's truly an honor to serve in this district, and we do have our differences, but you know, as you heard tonight from Glenda and Lisa, it's always a commitment to have that relationship at the center of our problem solving, and you know, I'm confident we'll be able to move through this time in our district's history and in this state's history, and it is a goal of all of ours to have those relationships intact at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. All right, next up we have presentations starting with the 2023-24 second interim budget update. Mr. Champion. I got the time. I just, for the record, you, you heard presentations for the last couple of weeks with Christian Mason. Mason, this is not my high school picture, okay? I did not have a red tie in high school. Okay. Um, and, and tonight, uh, Principal Shelley Lopez um, brought her son here as a civics class at Keevan. And Keevan, this is part of the presentation, the board meeting where you can either go to the restroom or go get some candy. Stretch your legs, okay? This is the, the, the fun part of it, so. So welcome, Keevan. Okay. Just want to make sure. Good evening, board, um, and good evening, everyone um, in our staff and those watching on YouTube. Uh, my name is Rick Champion. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Business Services for the district. And tonight is under Ed Code uh, 42130 is required to present the second interim of our um, current budget year, which is this fiscal year 23-24. And as like I said, it's required under law. Um, and quick agenda as we move through it, we're just going to go over, briefly over these data points, the why, why we're here. Prop 98, I thought that was important to talk about since it's now in the news. The use of assumptions in projecting revenues and expenditures, real brief. Second interim, for why we're here, which is an action item on later in, in the business section for approval. Um, I want to just briefly talk about some key programs that were brought through the last budget year and, in, and how they're impacted and proposed to be impacted. And um, um, President Flanders, I'm just a messenger here. The road ahead, the state picture, and the fiscal funding and district update. Please do not throw anything at me. Okay. Next steps. Okay, so really, why are we here? Like I just said, it's required under Ed Code. 
to not only present and file and approve two interim reports, but we also must certify ourselves to meet the financial obligation of the district. And there you can see the different dating. Um, and this report, second interim, is from July through activities through January 31st. And it's due before March 15th to the Orange County Department of Ed. We're trying to track. I'd like to give a shout out to our director of fiscal, Donna Castelli, who has put, worked tirelessly putting this report together. I just get to report it. Uh, again, like I said, we self-certify. There's three certifications. There's a positive, which means the district can meet its er obligations for not only the current year, but two years out, right? That's our budget window, the only state agency that has to do this. Qualified means it's, the district can meet its obligations in the current year, but it's going to have some troubles in the out years. In other words, it may or may not be able to make that, so you self-qualified. Negative means you cannot meet your financial obligation in the current year. Okay. Please report after tonight it will be a recommendation that we are positive certification on our multi-year uh, financial statement as we move forward. Prop 98, um, what is this? Basically what it is, real brief, it's a constitutional amendment that sets the minimum funding level. Right? Can't go below it. Okay? It's a formula. It's approximately 40% of the general fund. And there's certain tests, but we're not going to go into that. But basically, as the general fund goes, so do goes funding for schools. Okay? Then it goes up, 40 cents on a dollar, goes down, 40 cents on a dollar down. Okay? A couple years ago, the state, through Governor Brown, through Proposition, uh, which is the, with another acronym, but let me just call it the easy, the rainy day fund. The, the general fund has one, and the school size has one. So basically reserves, right? And that puts some other further language in schools because if the state said if we're holding money there, then you guys shouldn't hold as much, right? It's called a reserve cap. Very complicated and we can go that on our budget. But <clears throat> this is where the message turns um, sobering. Uh, the state last fall, let's just call it December, November, came out and reported the fiscal issues with revenue collection from the delayed tax filings from 2022. Remember, they delayed it because of weather, COVID, Nate fill in the blank. And when they approved this year's budget that we're in right now, they're basically flying blind. They did not know what the revenues were gonna be for the state. They did not come in. And not only did they not come in, they came in woefully low. So the LAO, which is a legislative analyst's office, along with the Department of Finance came out and said, the state is in a deficit. In other words, it's spending too much money, it's committed too much money, then it's gonna bring in. Not only that in the current year, but their budget window is 2023, excuse me, 2022 through 2023, the 23-24 year, which are in, and then their, the budget that they're proposing now is for 24-25. Did I say all that right? I hope I got all that right. Our budget window is a little different, I'll show you that here. And so there was fiscal challenges. There was projected drop of 14 billion, there's no more millions anymore, it's only billions of dollars in the Prop 98, which is the school district funding. Okay? For the 90% of the school districts in California, the other 10% is community funded, in other words, their property taxes far exceed their entitlement through a complicated formula, but they get to keep those property taxes. That's why you saw some other districts. And two in Orange County for, is Newport Mesa and Laguna Unified. In other words, their property taxes, so they exceed their entitlement, they actually get to keep it locally. What's very sombering is the report that just came out later, a couple weeks ago, February, from the legislative analysts. The governor's budgets for this year and going into next year was based on increasing revenues in this year. January's receipts, it did not come in. So they've now decreased the Prop 98 potential funding, another $7 billion. It's devastating. But like I said, what did they do with the year in 2022, 2023, which has already closed, already been audited? There's a deficit there, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But, and so the governor's doing a budget maneuver. But I just wanted to show you, like, this is the budget window. The state of California in the top box, they look, that's their window. And then our budget, 
window for the second interim, which includes this year and the two years out. In a couple of months, we'll be approving our budget for next year, which is based upon numbers that the state tells us at the May revision, it's called. That's the dating where they come out and they now they're in negotiations. But then all of a sudden, they'll have, we'll have those numbers. But the state needs to settle up on the 22, 23 year on the general fund, of course, from the Prop 98 fund, because they say schools are over, been overfunded by $8 billion. Well, we already closed our books. We've already spent the dollars. We've already earmarked the appropriations that we got. So the governor's making a budget maneuver of taking that $8 billion and throwing it into the future, which we talked about previous, basically running up the credit card, which money we may or may not get in the future, there's gonna be some issues. There's gonna have, how are they gonna settle up? And of course, the other side of the budget is gonna say, wait, what about us? We need money, prison stuff. But in a few months, like I said, we'll be looking out now another year. So we'll be closing our 23, 24, and moving forward into the 24, 25, and the two years out, okay? Use of assumptions. We just don't make these numbers out of thin air. We rely on FICMAT, which is a federal um, crisis management and assistance team. We use their calculators. We use their programs to, to calculate everything. We put the numbers in for enrollment. Gives us our thing. CSBA, President Flanders and, um, and uh, just mentioned, the legislative analysts, all these agencies, all these third parties help us with our assumptions. And of course, our DART board from school services, Orange County Department of of education and our internal assumptions, which is basically enrollment. Okay. Cost of living adjustment. This is where this was the shocker, and it's actually going to probably get worse. Again, don't throw anything at me. So for the 23-24 year, it's 8.22% COLA. They probably would have never approved this, knowing if they knew the state tax receipts were not going to come in. But they approved this and they funded it, or funding it currently. I hope they continue the fund this year, but we'll talk, we're gonna, they're talking about deferring that until the next budget year. For next year, the 24-25 and out, you can see the adjustments that they, the state has made. Now, why costs are up, everything is, it's more expensive. COLA is a measurement between two periods in the price change, it's what it is. It's a federal rate, right? So from 3.94%, reduced now to 0.76 projection. It's a 3% drop. But that 3% is compounded. So if we really look at out of our new budget year, it's a 9% reduction in revenue. Another, another uh, internal uh, assumption for us is enrollment. As you heard um, Principal Torres talk about enrollment, right? Not We get paid on attendance, but just enrollment. We're not immune to declining enrollment. We saw a little bump this year from TKs, and the stressful thing is most of them came in the week before school started, right? Um, because of the new uh, TK grade, it's, and as we start welcoming more four-year-olds, um, there was a little bit of a slight input, but we are still declining in enrollment, right? We're not immune to the rest of the districts in Orange County. We're not the worst. We're doing pretty good compared to our peers. Some of our peers are really struggling. And like I said, we get paid on enrollment. But just kind of give you a little bit of graph. The blue line is the, the one you don't want to see go down because that's our TKK projections. Now these are projections. They're gonna be off, obviously, but we use a straight line. So in other words, this year's second graders are gonna be next year's third graders and so on. And they get, always get adjusted. We adjust these in our reports at each interim. And of course, then we settle up at the end of the year. But just kind of give you a visualization. Second interim report and multi-year. Why do we need to worry about two years out? Well, it's required by law. Like I said, we're the only state agency to do it. AB 1200 and AB 2756 requires us to not only present this report tonight, but also certify and, and submit the current budget year and two years out. In other words, that checkbook at the end of that third year must remain positive over a 3% required reserve. Um, and they will change, because factors change, but this is a snapshot picture as of December 31st, 2024. 
Uh, I just want to give you a kind of the LCFF, as uh, Trustee Miller re alluded to, it's a, a projected to so far $68 million. It's un, okay, unrestricted, but it's made up of different buckets, right? We have a district, get a, all districts get a base grant the same, all districts in California. What the change is, is their population, and I hate this word, unduplicated percentage population, it's your ELs, your socioeconomic and, and foster youth. As it goes, some districts get incredible amounts of money. Not only do they get a supplemental grant, which we do, okay, of that 68, $3.4 million, which Dr. Diagostino reported last board meeting about LCAP, where we have to use those funds for the students that generate those dollars, right? But some districts actually get more dollars, almost 50% more if their unduplicated goes over 65, for, and it goes back to the first student. And that's where the real dollars and the inequity goes, and as President Flanders, excuse me, you're not President Flanders anymore, right? <laughs> Vice President Flanders alluded to. I just realized, sorry, Paul, I was, I already demoted you, Paul, so, because your comment earlier about my presentation. Um, and there's certain other antiquated add-ons that the state has that is um, open now to this clawback that they're proposing. But I just want to illustrate the $68 million and in, in kind of the idea. And all this tonight will be up on, uh, after tonight will be up on our website. So I just, there's no contrary. Here's the issue. Because of the COLA drop, I wanted to illustrate the difference between what a, just a couple of months ago when we presented the first interim last December, which went through October 31st. That's the blue bar. That's what we had in enrollment, which we projected in COLA out year. The red bar is now the new revenue numbers that we've incorporated into our financials, okay? So between those two years, our revenue has now projected to drop by about two million, two million and a half each year for the current budget window, okay? We have a revenue problem. We have an expenditure problem, you know, because we kept some COVID after effects and some one-time funds, but we have a systematic revenue problem. When I say we, all school districts in California, but that's Brea's impact right there. And so now we, tonight in our financials, when you compare the first interim to the second interim, which we're not gonna do tonight, so sorry, Kevin, I know we're getting late, is that we're gonna, I, we've already adjusted the revenue down, okay, right off the top. And as we get to our budget window for next year, there's another $2.7 million. These are real dollars. They're unrestricted to support unrestricted everything. I know the, not the restricted side of the house, but unrestricted. A um, lot of numbers and details, sorry about this, but it, we'll go over that. If you're welcome, welcome to call me, 831-207-0879 is my cell number. Um, but we can really dive into these numbers, but these will be also on our site. But what I wanted to highlight was the drop in the, right down to the revenue. And of course, there, we budget for positions and programs and if they're not funded, if there's not a person in there, then we start right and encumbering those dollars in budget because we always have the budget is for the position, not the person. And um, we typically write that down at each first interim or some districts just wait to the end and then write it all off and they call it fall out, which is one time. So we've been reducing those and making sure that technically what we're thinking, what we're proposing and what we've proposed is those unfilled positions will remain vacant now for the rest of this fiscal year. They're still in the budget for the next year until we take some action, but basically we call it a hiring freeze, right? So just try to save those so as we move forward. And of course, who would have thought bank interest was another revenue? So we did increase our revenue for this year for bank interest, but not in the out years, but um, it's just a sign of the times. And we'll go through it because there's also a restricted side and unrestricted numbers. And so those are our, and these are in your budget book that we sent out to you earlier. So we'll go over those at another time. But the ending fund balance is where it's at. This is why when we self-certify, if you look at the column all the way to right, all the way at the bottom, I know it's, it is three years, well, two years out. And so we need to re have a ending fund reserve required by law of 3% of our general fund expenditures, $3 million. And then you see the unassigned 1.9. So we are 
positive. In other words, we have ending fund balance that, re that exceeds our required reserve. The reason why you see a decrease of the ending fund balance from 24 million to 7 million, some of that's restricted dollars as you can do for restricted programs like special ed and other grant funds and stuff. But deficit spending, we're spending more than we're bringing in and now it's been accelerated because of the loss of the COLA or the write down of the COLA. Okay, as you see in the red box, I guess I put a red box. So real quickly, key programs. And the reason why I bring it up because these programs were not in the, on the table 30 days ago. They are now on the table for the LAO. They had need to make recommendations. So ELOP was a new program uh, two years ago where it's basically you heard the story of the nine hour day, 30 days off calendar to provide after school care and enrichment and stuff. The state was funding this based on enrollment. They, then they, of course they separated the districts to the haves and have nots. Those that have high end up duplicated over 75% got a lot more money than the districts under 75%, which is Brea. And they, we actually got less money even from the budget because they cut that midstream because all of a sudden they had a lot more TKers come into the system and those districts that had high UPP got more money. So they wrote down the rate two districts, which is Brea. We got less funding. So we actually lost, had a write off $300,000 from the ELOP. And you have two years to spend those dollars. Boy, Prop 28, we've been waiting for these dollars <laughs> to come in. Uh, this is the uh, constitutional amendment a couple of years ago, the election for arts, music, um, and it's 1% of the general fund. We've been waiting for how to spend it, basically the audit regs. They're still not here yet. But the funding now has been calculated, and I'm sorry that you can't really see this because it's not very bright, but we're projected to receive $746,000 this year. The issue is that every school, it's a formula driven, so every, some schools that are elementary, like Mariposa is projected to get 69, and Olinda is projected to get 81. We don't make up these numbers. It's formula driven based on enrollment and then duplicated. That's the takeaway is these dollars are not driven to the sites by cabinet, by board. They're driven by law. But I thought the funny thing is, and I, you're gonna get a chuckle, I did laugh. They did put all the compliance stuff in now. They finished that. They didn't just tell us how to spend it yet. So there's a whole list of compliance stuff that goes along with this dollars, including more board reports from Rick Champion, which I know you're happy about, more audits, more compliance, and of course, just more layer of cost. And this is not a program we can opt out. But you have three years to spend those dollars, which is a good thing. I just thought that was interesting. The Learning Recovery Emergency Block Grant, the reason why I want to talk about this, this was a block grant that came basically replaced a lot of the ESSER funds for our district, right? Continue our project <laughs> programs. And it was pinging back last year through the budget. Did we cut, did we claw back? They gave us back money. <clears throat> what they're proposing now is to claw back or take some of these unencumbered monies from districts and so when the word LCFF came on, it was basically local control. Now they're changing the L word. Now it's legislative control. So that's, I just, that was just right off the cuff there. Thank you for laughing. But anyway, so I just went, UTK um, is still going forward. This year, uh, the budget year, we'll be welcoming all those four-year-olds through June. So almost the whole entire school year. Um, which is a welcome relief, but as you know, they come with a lot of challenges, a lot of costs, which there is some add-on dollars. But there was a promise when they did all this in the 25-26 year that we would get funding, additional funding to lower those class, the student count to teacher, to student, uh, to, excuse me, student to adult, down to 10 to one. There was supposed to be additional funding in it. Well, guess what? They're still, gonna, they're still requiring it, but they took away the funding, or they're not proposing to do the funding. That's still on the block, you know, talk about. That's still going forward, and I thought that was interesting. And last but not least, these two programs, home to school transportation, which I'm sorry, I have another required ed code transportation presentation after this. Um, they're, they're, I know, I know. 
They're um, also proposing to, to lower the reimbursement rate now. And I don't even know how, what, why they're bringing this up, but um, the free, the school, universal schools program, the meals, basically any student that comes, breakfast, lunch, no cost. They're talking about restructuring that. And that gets me nervous, and there's no issue there, but relying maybe more on the feds to reimburse, which is a bad idea, and to do a rate cost freeze. I, I don't even know what that means yet, but I just thought that was interesting that we put on there. So the road ahead, do not throw anything at me. This is the decline in Prop 98 funding, just to show you. The gray bar was last June. The blue bar is just January. And now you can start seeing the drop in the LAO projection going out. Real dollars, how do they replace those? That's, that's the advocacy that's going to happen right now, as, as President Flanders admit, Vice President Flanders admitted. Um, as you can see, it's almost a $8 million drop in Prop 90 funding this year. And they were going to backfill some of it with the Rainy Day Fund. The Rainy Day Fund only had $8 billion in it. And we're already it's projected to be $7 billion. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a challenge. And then uh, the deficits spending all the way out to 27, 28 year. This problem is going to be around. This is the state. Even if they're half wrong by these projections, they're still in trouble. So the impact is coming and moving forward. They're recommending quite a few things. This is the overall approach, and I promise you I am on almost the last slide. Um, really just prioritize core programs, nothing new. Reject the governor's funding proposal of taking and running up the credit card in the out years because it's going to affect us. It's got to be paid back, right? And start identifying a different solutions now this budget year. One-time solutions, um, address the shortfall with the reserve, reject all new one-time spending. You actually had one-time new spending in here, which we were going to get anyways, but so let's reject it. Um, review unallocated funds and reduce um, the priority grants. In other words, any money that they haven't given to districts, they're not going to give it. That's what they're saying. Let's push it and put it out to the out years. And so I heard a, co a comment today um, um, from our CTA, uh, uh, CTE coordinator, Brandy, that she was told, start spending your grant funds now, because once it's spent, it's spent. If it's left unspent, it's open game. And exploring the ongoing programs that I just said. Um, also, they re they're proposing to reject the statutory COLA. In other words, they'll declare it. 0 0.76, 0 0.8, fill in the blank point something. Don't fund it. Which 0.76 is, if there's ever going to pick a year not to fund the COLA, I guess it's OK. But there's no statutory obligation to ever repay that. The state has done that, but there is no constitutional amendment agreement to repay those dollars. Okay. Um, reject any ongoing proposals, and, um, and so on, so on, so on. So just give you a thing. There's a lot of conversation. So next steps, the governor is calling for limited early action. In other words, he's going to kick that can down the road. I don't know if he's planning something at another office, but he wants to you know, not take the blame for some of this. Um, the next step is control, entirely controlled right now by the legislature. So we're flying in the dark as we prepare our budget. And um, as more information comes through, the overall message is planned for further decrease in school funding by this June. I just showed you why, right? That's the thing. We've already made commitments and continue making commitments. So, and the likelihood of it happening is it's, it's going to happen. So call the action. You just talked about this earlier. See that QR code? That gets you to this slide. Those links, every link there with every senator goes to their website, you can, you can voice your opinion right there. And if you'd like to do it, there's the governor's um, uh, phone, there's Senator Josh Newman's phone, there's Assembly Person Philip Chen's phone. Feel free to call them. Um, I tried to get their cell phones to number, but this is their office earlier, but this is their thing. So this is a great slide if you'd like to keep that up there. I think that's my last slide, but I'm just going to keep that one up there. So if you have any questions, but as of tonight, action item 4A, um, 
in line with board goal 4.0, we're gonna recommend a positive certification. So that's my presentation tonight. Thank you, Rick. Any questions? No? Okay. Any, any questions? <laughs> so Rick, you're up again. Transportation yes. plan update. This one to be quick. This, this one's going to be very, very quick. This is another required um, in the 20, budget 22-23. They, uh, as I said early, earlier, um, they're now reimbursing uh, school districts for transportation, which they don't do that in California. They gave us a flat rate. It's been fixed for many years since uh, the inception of the LCFF. Required, required under Ed Code 41850.1. Board goal 4.0. So we, have, we transport approximately 490 students um, daily where we have 490 um, bus passes uh, issued and 128 also additional students on IEPs. This is gonna be also for approval and under action item 4B. Um, kind of brief recap, transportation. Um, in California, there's no mandate to go forward, back and forth home to school, but that was a proposal. We must present and have a plan, which is included, updated, to receive um, the funding, which, again, 60 cents on the dollar, which will take it. The ELOP program, which we do have at every elementary site. If we did not, we would have to transport at our dime on that, which would have been subject to um, reimbursement. And then we get reimbursed also for our special our IEP um, kiddos um, through this fund. So a little bit of background, too much to read, but basically, the costs that were associated and calculated for our district, um, $3.7 million in last year to 22-23, we get 60 cents on a dollar. If everything stays right, we'll see that next year um, as funding of $1.8 million, and this is what we're reporting and, re and is for receipt of those dollars. So we spend them, and two years later, we get paid 60 cents on a dollar. I like to say that because what do we, the 40 cents comes out of the general fund. Again, the plan includes a number of, of things. Um, priority planning, um, students with low income, that is our priority as always. We still have free and reduced um, applications, and there's the link. If you have any questions, please contact our food services department. We describe how we, um, in our plan, if, um, no kid um, that's on a McKinney-Vento pays, and if they're under a certain income level, no child pays um, for transportation in our district. Um, we described how we do it. It's under board policy, so we check that box. And like I said, I am going very quickly, so we can go to the next section. And um, we developed a lot of these um, reports in our program through our LCAP process. Um, OCT, Orange County Transit Authority still has now kept their youth ride free program. It's still invalid valid till September 30th of 2024. That's a product of COVID and they've kept doing that. So any child under 18 can get a bus pass and, and no costs. You just, you contact OCTA. And then we're still trying to attract and retain qualified bus drivers. We've done a number of things to so an MOU, a new board for trainee, a new job description last board meeting and in so in contact. So again, the, we had to submit a breakdown of our expenditures and so next steps, how we always, how are we gonna fund the other 40%? How are we gonna continue to attract and retain bus drivers? That's a picture of um, one of our bus drivers there. Um, and the age and condition of our fleet, because we know the electrification is coming, which they're not gonna delay any funding for that now. And then how do we um, accommodate, should the state start requiring um, transportation similar to universal meals, which is basically a no cost program, which I believe now is gonna be pushed out. So comments, questions, that's my presentation that's required under this as an action item um, later for approval. No? Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Okay, moving on to public comments. During the public comments portion of the meeting or during any agenda item, there's an opportunity for the public to speak. The public has been asked to complete and submit a blue public comment card prior to this portion of the agenda, and anyone addressing the board should state their name in association with the district. Public comment speakers in the audience are expected to abide by Board Policy 1313 Civility, which promotes mutual respect, civility, and orderly conduct among district's employees, parents, and the public. Public members who address the board will be limited to a maximum of three minutes per speaker, 30 minutes per topic. For further information, please see the agenda header. This meeting will be recorded for use in the official minutes. 
Okay, so uh, I'll call the first person in a second. I just want, um, the faster we get everyone up and through the three minutes, or if you take a couple seconds off your three minutes, we'll get all 11 of you in, okay? And last week, I, last time I promised Curtis Chan that he would be first up, and Curtis Chan is first up. So Curtis is up first, and then Kendra Gross is on deck. He left, he left already? Then it'll be Kendra Gross, and then Kenneth Lim's on deck. All right. Good evening, BOUSD Board of Trustees and all those in attendance tonight. My name is Kendra Gross Tapia. I'm a parent of a fifth grader, and I'm also the PTO president at Country Hills. I'm here to speak tonight to stress the importance of fairly compensating the educators in the Braille in the district. With my PTO role, I have formed relationships with all the Country Hills teachers, especially those here tonight, um, and staff to witness on a daily basis. And I witness their daily, their commitment to our students in the Brea community. Within the past few years, and especially post-COVID, Country Hills educators have gone out of their way to work with PTO, including volunteering at evening events, suggesting new enrichment activities and ideas, and encouraging families to get involved at the school. I'm forever grateful to the teacher support of PTO and fully believe that the Country Hills community is as strongly connected as it is because of their contributions. However, as a parent and a single mom, I cannot voice enough the impact the teachers have had on my family personally. A week before my son started kindergarten in August 2018, at 5 a.m. in the morning, a man broke into our condo, forcing my son and I to barricade ourselves in the closet for 22 long minutes before Brea PD was ultimately able to shoot him. This trauma has impacted my family more than I could have ever imagined, and kindergarten started in five days. At the beginning of each school year, I made an effort to warn every Country Hill staff member who came in contact with my child of the event as a precaution and let them know that we were working through this trauma. I was afraid that this event would define and limit my son's life and capabilities. However, each educator who worked with my son has shown him a level of compassion and kindness that has minimized the impact of this horrendous experience. This includes his kindergarten teacher who held his hand during lockdown drills that were all too familiar and would personally give me updates and call me after to tell me anything he said. This continued through this current year where his fifth grade teacher encouraged him to write about the event for the first time, allowing him to use his own words. I've been able to watch my son reach levels of confidence, safety, and warmth that I feared he would never achieve. I strongly believe his success in school and his emotional intelligence are a direct result of each educator's commitment to their job and love for the students at Country Hills. I'm forever indebted to each Country Hills teacher and staff for changing the trajectory of his life. <laughs> and no, I'm not the only one who feels this way too at Country Hills. Uh, just as a little background, I went to Country Hills myself with Kimberly. Um, I also went, made my way through the junior high and high school, and when I became a single mom, I made a point to come back to Brea because I knew what I was getting myself into. I knew that he would see the magic of the school district. I knew he would see the magic of Country Hills. I've been able to witness those same effects on my son to this day. I ask that you please properly and fairly compensate our educators and keep in mind that they're truly changing the lives, not just of students, but of all the family members too. Thank you. Next up is Kenneth Lim and then Nadia on deck. Good evening board, my name is Kenneth Lim. I'm a parent of a kindergartner at Braille Linda, Junior, uh, Braille Linda Elementary School. Um, my son will be attending the same school next year as a kindergartner as well. I'm going to ad lib here a little bit. First time doing um, a sp speaking sessions such as this, but just want to emphasize that my wife and I, before we sent our daughter, our oldest, to Braille Linda, uh, we had considered a lot of private schools. We had a lot of input from other parents, indicating that private schools were better than public schools. Um, and after a lot of visits, we decided to send our daughter uh, to Braille Linda Elementary School. Our teacher, Ms. Peck, is here along with her colleagues, and we've been incredibly um, blessed with uh, just a great experience. And not only for ourselves, but our, our, our parental, our friends on our streets, a lot of other parents have 
kids in Braille into elementary school, and they've all had wonderful experience with all the teachers. Uh, we're, we're a tight village. It takes a village to raise a child, as you know, and whatever it takes to help our teachers be fairly compensated, please let us know. Our parents will all bond, come together. Uh, we'll send emails to the governor. Whatever it takes, let us know. Uh, we all communicate with one another, and we fully support our teachers, and we want to make sure they're paid and compensated fairly. So as parents want to, want to help you, want to help them, and in turn help our, our kids. And it's just a great, great community. We're so happy with them. I want to keep it going. Thank you, Kenneth. Next up is Nadia, and following Nadia is Kathy Jimenez. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and share my support for our teachers. As a parent of two young children in the district, I'm here to ask you to please resolve this as swiftly as possible and pay the fair and right wages. We moved less than five miles just so we can be in this district, specifically because we believe in the teachers, paras, and administration, and all the work you're all doing. Um, and for context, the previous district I was in was super stellar, and it's the one I grew up in, so the bar was set pretty high, but Brea is just that special. And quite frankly, one of the things that really stood out for us was that the district itself, the leaders, and the board were full of kind, responsive, no BS, get things done kind of people. And so I'm here today to ask that you stay true to that and show us how to get things done and done well. We've entrusted our teachers and parents with our most, most precious blessings, but they're tasked with more than just education. They instill confidence, teach conflict management, and they help our kids through the most wild emotions and situations. And we all know that's not easy in today's world. They're educating the next generation of brave civil servants, business owners, artists, Nobel laureates, and our brave leaders and first responders. So then I ask, why do our teachers have to accept among the lowest wages in Orange County? What's really hard to digest is that we know this is just the beginning of a long journey. I, what I'm observing is that the district is facing a number of challenges that are butting up against each other. We know there's new homes being built with more students to serve. Increasingly, parents are looking to alternatives other than public education, both of which will exacerbate the situation. We know demographics are changing, the student needs are evolving, and so many more challenges. But we also know there's so many more challenges to come. And so I wonder myself, how can we trust everyone to lead us into the future if we can't even figure out the issues we have today? And most importantly, will you have the set of amazing teachers and staff still standing by you if you don't pay them a fair wage? Finally, I'd like you to consider the message that we're sending to our students. Because I've heard this, the, the statements, you know, our district is small, we have low, fewer low-income students, we get less state funding, it's a state problem, go talk to someone else, et cetera, et cetera. And so this says to me that my kids might not reserve the best compared to the students in Yorba Linda or Fullerton, because undoubtedly the fair pay, fair right pay, and a supportive district will attract and retain the best. And the reverse may very well be true, too. That kind of behavior also makes me think that forget ownership and accountability, because it's not my problem, go ask someone else. And this says, and this is the best one yet, even if you excel or outperform your colleagues, your pay might not reflect that. So forget working hard and producing results because it doesn't matter. Some may say this is a harsh reality that we're operating in, but the reality is this. This is why you are elected here or paid or hired to be here. Because we trust you. We trust you to do that hard work. And strong leadership doesn't show itself when times are good. It's when we face these challenges, as we all know. So my ask is that you go there and you do that extra mile and you find a way. Let's not leave it as just a California or other legislative problem. Let's take ownership. This is our community, and this is a Brea community problem. So please, just as we ask our teachers and our students to put in the extra effort, please do the same. We know you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up will be Kathy Jimenez and then Lizette Diaz after that. Good evening. I'm Kathy Jimenez, proud Brea resident and Laurel parent of my third grade uh, my third grader, MJ, and my first grader, Lena, who her teacher right here is Miss Lizette Diaz. As stated by the Mariposa students, BOUSD's mission statement, we are a devoted educational community that develops our students to become a local and global influencers through dynamic learning experiences. Let's think about that for a moment. Is this the mission? If this is the mission, then when and why are we failing our teachers who make this mission statement happen? Teachers are the backbone to Brea schools. Our teachers shouldn't have to fight for a fair wage, drive miles, over 30 miles to get to school just to be there for their students. 
If our students deserve a dynamic learning experience, how can you promise that without educated, qualified, and empathetic teachers? Our city of Brea has a reputation having the best schools. Without their talent, grit, and tenacity, our students are the ones that are deeply affected. I implore you to use your position of power, influence, and remember why you serve on the board, and be mindful that our teachers deserve better because our children do. This is a message from Laurel parent, Annie Ortiz, a good friend of mine, to whom this may concern. The reason why I believe the teachers deserve so much more is because they work very hard for our kids. I am a single mom. I struggle with just one child. Being around 20 to 25 kids day in, day out is a superhero power. I have been living in Brea for the past three years, and my son Gio loves his teachers, Miss Diaz included. The reason why I moved here is because I know my son will have a good education with all the Laurel teachers. Please give them their 4%. They're not asking for much. They just want what's fair. Before I came here, I interviewed my seven-year-old Elena. Elena, why do you love Miss Diaz as your teacher? I love my teacher because she's nice, helpful, and loving. What do you like most about her, honey? Well, she cares for us that we get to learn every day. And what has she taught you? She said a lot of things. But the most important, how would you feel if she wasn't your teacher? What if she had to go to another school? Well, mommy, I would be sad. And as a transplant from San Diego, born and raised first in my family to graduate from college at UC Riverside, I'm a 39-year-old woman, and I chose Brea because Brea is not Irvine. It's not San Diego. It's a city of art. It's a community that instills beauty and passion and love for each other. And that's a small town Brea that I am running for a PTO president at my Laurel. So choose me because we need a better Brea. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Lizette Diaz, followed by Noel Master One. <laughs> Hi, I'm reading this on behalf of a uh, Laurel parent tonight. Good evening, I am unable to attend tonight, but I am so grateful my message is being read. This is my eighth year as a Laurel, sorry. That was very sweet. As a Laurel par uh, parent at Laurel Magnet School, the teachers have always been phenomenal and my kids have had the best experiences thanks to these teachers. I was shocked to learn that our teachers are amongst the lowest paid in Orange County. We need to pay them what they are worth at the very least, a competitive wage. We are going to lose our teachers if we do not take care of them and appreciate them. As a parent, I pay my babysitters very well because I am entrusting them with my babies. I know that when they are paid and appreciated, they put in the extra effort. The last thing I want is to pay my babysitter the bare minimum because I will get the bare minimum in return. No one wants to feel underappreciated and underpaid. It makes me sad to know this is what our wonderful teachers have been going through because they still show up every day with a smile and put in an effort despite not being fairly compensated. My husband and I both grew up in Brea and went to Brea schools. Brea always had a reputation of having great schools. If we want to maintain the same reputation of great schools, we need to have great teachers. These teachers are not, going, are not being greedy ask, and asking to become the top paid teachers in the county. They just don't want to be taken advantage of. More and more is asked of teachers all the time, and there comes a point where they will leave us for greener fields. Please take care of our wonderful teachers which advice would you give to a friend in their position? I'm guessing you would advise them to look elsewhere to find a job where they are valued and feel respected. Thank you, Mandy Burdett. Thank you. Noelle's up, and after Noelle, Susie Ginther. Hello, I'm gonna read um, a little bit on behalf of me, but another for a friend. Um, I am a parent of two kids at Era Vista. Um, I wanna speak about how much our teachers mean to our family and our community. 
Um, our kids spend almost a third of their day with these teachers, and the teachers spend a third plus with so many kids. And I tried to pandemic school my one kid at the time, and I couldn't hang, and it blows my mind that they're able to invest so much time and energy into kids they're not even related to. My kids adore the teachers at Ara Vista, even the ones that they haven't had. There's a teacher that lives near us, and all the Ara Vista kids in the neighborhood, we live in the tree streets, everyone there goes to Ara Vista. Um, there's a teacher who lives near us, and all of the Ara Vista kids in the neighborhood love when there's a Maestro Garcia sighting as he walks around with his wife. Everyone has a teacher that made a huge impact in their life. Mine was Mrs. McDonald, fifth grade. These are those teachers for our kids, and they deserve the absolute best. Um, and now I'm going to read, actually, an email from my friend to our principal in regards to her son's teacher. Um, he hasn't received it yet, so act surprised. Um, I just wanted to reach out and let you know how much of a difference Miss Amanda and Natalie and the rest of the special education preschool staff have made in Kellen and our family's life. I look back at a year ago at where we were with Kellen's behavior and it's quite astounding how much progress he's made. I was feeling really hopeless and had run out of options and felt like I've tried everything when by the grace of God I was connected with Natalie and she did nothing but advocate for Kellen and the support he needed. I've noticed such a difference in Kellen's behavior, patience, kindness, and flexibility, and I know it's directly from the tools Miss Amanda has taught him. She's so patient, takes the time to listen to him and our concerns, and teaches Kellen the tools that meet his specific needs. We've gotten more support from Miss Amanda and Natalie than we ever did with costly health insurance. And now he's reached a point where he can use the tools that his teachers have taught him at home when he feels that he's gonna have a meltdown. He's learned emotional regulation and he has, the tools that he's learned in class has significantly decreased the stress in their home life. And it is for these reasons and so many more that, that we just can't even con conceive life without our teachers if they had to leave. And I mean, if I could give them all the money in the world, I would, but I can't. Um, but you guys can, so thanks. Noelle? And after Noel will be Hannah Ko. Good evening. My name is Noel Maestrowan, and I, um, I may not be what some would call a legacy employee in the traditional sense, but my connection to this community is strong. I am lucky to have married into a family whose roots here date back to 1909. My husband's great uncle, a proud graduate of class of 1934, dedicated his life to serve the Bray community. My mother-in-law and all three of her children, all products of Brea schools, continued this legacy, both as students and employees of the district. And the legacy continues with all of our children who have attended Brea schools or who are currently attending Brea schools. My own journey to Brea began at the age of 18, and in 2003, I started a career within the Brea Linda Unified School District. However, in 2010, I made the difficult decision to, delete, to leave the district due to <clears throat> due to better paid opportunities. Yet in 2013, as a new parent, I found myself drawn back to Brea, not for financial opportunity, but out of the love for this school community. It wasn't an easy decision. It meant accepting a substantial pay cut. But for me, and for many of us gathered here tonight, our commitment to Brea is not about money. We are here because we love this district its families, and its unique sense of community. Brea holds a special place in our hearts, and there is simply nowhere else like it. Over the past decade, I've worked tirelessly to regain what I have lost in terms of pay. But one thing has remained consistent, my commitment to this district. <clears throat> it's a passion shared by all of us who choose to serve this community, day in and day out. For too long, the hard work of the staff have gone unrecognized in the area of compensation. We need the district and the board to show that they value every individual within the district. It is an investment in the future of Brea. Without a competitive salary increase, we cannot support ourselves, our families, and continue to thrive 
in our roles as educators and support staff. The work and responsibilities continue to increase without wages to match. Something has to give. We are your devoted education community. Thank you. Thank you. Next up will be Hannah Coe, followed by Joanne Galvan. 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 Good evening. My name is Hannah, and I'm a BOUSD parent of two special needs boys that attend Aero Vista. Four years ago, we decided to pursue and purchase our first home here in Brea, largely due to the reputation of the BOUSD. And to our surprise, the day after we moved, my son was born. <laughs> while everything was still in boxes, and his name is Connor. At the time, we had no idea that in two years, he would be diagnosed with a rare neurological motor speech disorder called childhood apraxia of speech. And in the first year of his life, we were told that he may never speak. And I don't know if people in this room have had the experience of having a special needs child, but the experience is very lonely. It's tough. Um, but all of that changed when we came to Aero Vista and he turned three years old and we met our special education team, the preschool team there. It felt like meeting the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found a support team. I found people that had the same concerns I had. And not only that, but they were willing to work to support him as well. Um, in his second, this is his second year at Aero Vista in the special education preschool program. And to our surprise, in August, Connor said his first words. His first question to me was, he was investigating kind of his stroller, and he asked me, what are these? Um, in August, I heard his singing voice for the first time. And also in August, I heard him fight with his brother <laughs> <laughs> for the first time. I heard him call me mom for the first time in September. And in October, he, had, he told his um, teacher, preschool teacher, Miss Mack, I have dreams. And then just two months ago, in January, he told me, Owen will be so proud of me. He will be so proud of me for being big like him. In the last two years at Aero Vista, Connor's teachers and paraprofessionals have been instrumental to his progress. His, his story is evidence of their excellence, their compassion, their trustworthiness, and their grit. And I hope that you will remember his story and the impact that our teachers and paraprofessionals have on students and kids like Connor when considering how to care and compensate our teachers and paraprofessionals. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Joanne Galvan. Galvan. <laughs> hey, a little short here. Uh, hi, I'm uh, here on behalf of, uh, uh, I'm here this evening to speak on behalf of a parent from Laurel Elementary who couldn't be here, and this is her comment. Today I come before you, or I'm here in lieu of her, uh, before you to discuss a critical, critical investment, the investment in our educators, the backbone of our society, and the architects of our future. The teachers are simply not instructors, as they are mentors, motivators, and guardians who shape the young minds and instill in them the values knowledge, and skills necessary to thrive in an ever-changing world. They dedicate countless hours to lesson planning, curriculum development, and individual student support, and often exceed their contractual obligations. They navigate complex classroom dynamics, manage diverse learning styles, and adapt to evolving educational landscapes. The current reality, however, despite their invaluable contributions, many teachers face a harsh reality. They are often underpaid, overworked, and undervalued. This leads to several concerns, teacher retention, quality of education, and att attracting talent. 
Investing in teachers is not simply about raising salaries. It's about recognizing their immense value and nurturing a profession that attracts and retains the best and brightest minds. By providing competitive salaries, manageable workloads, and adequate resources, we can attract and retain top talent and enhance student learning outcomes. Our teachers are the cornerstone of a thriving society. They deserve our unwavering support and recognition, and investing in their well-being is not is not just an expense, it's an, an investment in our collective future. Let's join hands and advocate for policies that ensure our educators are valued, empowered, and adequately compensated for the life-changing work they do. Thank you, Mrs. Paniagua. Thank you. No, I'll do it. So we had Nadia up again, but we only do it once, person per. You already spoke, so if you want to leave her letter with us, that would be nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leave it with Annette. OK. Moving on, Brandy Augustine. Are you still here somewhere? There you are. Hi, good evening. Hi, I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of our CTE students and staff for all of your continued support for CTE. As February wrapped up, which was CTE month, we greatly appreciated the recognition of CTE month for our teachers and our students. And it's through your guidance and leadership from cabinet and the board that we're able to do some amazing things with our students. We have some amazing things planned for the rest of the year as well. We have our robotics kids just got back from uh, Point Y Mimi. We have our HOSA kids getting ready to go to their leadership conference, and we have our FCCLA kids also getting ready to go to theirs. So it's because of our amazing culture and climate of Brea that we're able to do these wonderful things with CTE. And we just want to say thank you. And we left some things on the dais for you. Um, I know we try and do that every year. So what you have in front of you with your little packets, those are actually little note cards. Uh, and the art is actually from our digital media art program that you saw with Jason Hertzberg, which is in partnership with North Orange County ROP. Uh, and so those are there for you. And then we also have the tote bags. Don't show our counselors yet because they're getting those later. Um, and our teachers. Uh, but we have those just as a, a thank you for all of your support. We wouldn't be able to do and uh, what we do without you guys and uh, have those student outcomes. So thank you. Thank you, Brandy. <clears throat> and last tonight will be Brock Chadzi. Did I say that right? Got it. Good evening, Board President Ruiz and members of the Board of Trustees. My name is Brock, and I'm here on behalf of the Office of Vice Chairman Doug Chafee from the Orange County Board of Supervisors. Uh, our office would like to share some upcoming events with the uh, Brea Olinda Unified School District community. We will be hosting our annual Conditions of Children's Community Forum on Friday, March 22nd from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the La Habra City Hall. During this community event, we will be reviewing the county's annual conditions of children's report and have presentations on children and youth mental health from guest speaker, California Surgeon General, Dr. Diana Ramos. Uh, we hope you can join us for this event in partnership with First Five Orange County. Our next event we would like to share is our upcoming Future Leaders Program taking place this summer. This program is designed for current 10th and 11th graders uh, who reside in the cities of Anaheim, Brea, Buena Park, Fullerton, La Habra, Placentia, and Stanton. Students who participate will be able to develop their leadership skills, explore different career opportunities, and learn how local government works, including touring various county agencies. At the end of the program, students will receive a certificate of recognition from our office. Uh, deadline to apply for this is Wednesday, March 27th at 5 p.m., and the program will take place on Saturdays throughout the month of June. Information for both events is available at d4.ocgov.com. I'll also leave some flyers in the back or by the door. Uh, should you or anyone need any additional information, please uh, don't hesitate to call our office at 714-834-3440. Thank you. Could you do me a favor and give your business card to our superintendent, please? Of course. Thank you. Thanks. Any more cards? <coughs> no more cards? Okay. Moving on, consent calendar. Do I have a motion? So, so moved, Milt. Whoa, whoa. 
Miller. Miller in Becerra. Miller first, Becerra second. Any questions? Okay, Eleonora? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 5 0. And I want to say thank you to the Brea Korean Sister City Association for a $1,000 donation to the high school Korea program. And the Brea Rotary Club, $600 to the high school HOSAAS. Well, that's the HOSA. HOSA. That's HOSA. That that's HOSA. She's talking about. <laughs> All right. Public hearings, we have none. Information discussion direction. D significant disproportionality. Superintendent. Thank you very much. Phil is going to provide a brief update on the status of our significant disproportionality plan. Yeah, good evening, President Rees, uh, Vice President Flanders, members of the board, and guests. Uh, just a quick update. Uh, as you know, uh, in September of this year, we gathered and inquired information about our significant disproportionality situation. We investigated the matter and got to a root cause analysis in December, and our SIM plan for improvement was approved uh, just recently. So just an update on some of the things we're doing. Uh, as it relates to cultural responsiveness um, and, and training there, we're bringing in Sharina Betters. As you know, she worked with us earlier this year at the January Professional Development Day. She's our Chief Equity and Access Officer for the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools and um, has, was very well received uh, here in the district. And so we're going to be working with her more on cultural responsiveness. As far as trauma-informed training, goes, we're going to be working with a trauma-informed training for teachers modules out of the California Surgeon General's Office. For parent and community engagement, we're going to be working with the Harvard EdX project for family engagement training. For cultural proficiency, we're going to be working out of the uh, Association of School, the American School Counselors Association implementation checklist for anti-racism. Uh, we'll be working with OCDE on uh, further development of our MTSS programming and OCDE as it relates to improvements to our SST processes and support for ELD programming. We will be working with our ELD standards training and ELD roadmap training also out of OCDE. So between um, uh, expert individuals and our partnership with OCDE, our, our SIM plan to respond to significant disproportionality is now in, in full swing. We will have a quarterly report to you probably before the end of the year, as well as a budget update of how we are expending the funds that we are required to set aside for this, uh, this project. So thank you very much for the update, and unless you have any questions. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, next is facilities update with Rick Champion and Jeff Ferrato. Yeah, we're good, Jeff. We're going to be real brief tonight, um, just a real brief update. And um, this is all about us tonight. I always say BOSD, you can't spell it without us, but it's all about us, right? So we have some fencing update. Ready? Watch your screens. We are DSA approved. So we. Yeah, 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 I was going to say. We put them up overnight. So we received approval back from DSA. As you know, there was a couple comments that we resubmitted on the second round. Um, some path of travel issues, and so we were arranging some of the deck chairs and some of the new offices configuration. It just, it just makes sense of not having people enter on the middle of the campus. And so we're meeting with Studio Plus next week to start putting our bid package together. And then we'll go through the public works. We'll report timely on that. As you know, there's a bid protest period that we have to keep in mind, too, um, and move forward, of course, to get, make sure the qualified um, bidders are um, qualified, number one, and enabled to put together a large bid bond. As you know, they need to put up 10% either in the bond or security for the bond. So that moving forward, great news. Right, Jeff? Okay. Yeah. Um, All. Oh, so all campuses, the only one that we did not need to go through DSA was Canyon because of the scope is too, was just small enough that it didn't need to go through state. Okay. Mariposa MPR update. You heard Principal Torres give a little shout out. Just imagine what a little paint and a little lighting does to a room. Go check it out. If you haven't checked it out, right? Shout, I bring out Jeff here because I'm going to give him a shout out. To, Jeff loves these little 
projects. I wouldn't call it little, but, but just you know these projects. And I know he stresses about it, and we joke about it, but shout out to him. And I always say how fortunate we are to have trades in our staff, right? Electrical, um, carpentry, and the list goes on, right? And probably, they're probably gonna hate me tomorrow because I didn't name them all out. But they really took this initiative on. This is almost a project done entirely with district staff, yeah. except for the audio and visual equipment, which was donated by, I don't know if they were PTA at the time, but the PTO, we'll just call it that, for the, uh, PTO. Oh, PTO now, I know that that paid for the upgrade and we brought many change orders because they just kept saying, we'll do more and do more. And so that is all functional, yep. right? Um, shout out for that. So if you haven't gone over there, please go take a quick tour. You're, you're gonna not believe it's the same room. It looks bigger, right? Just by the light. Uh, feasibility study through our, um, uh, with PJHM. Our plan is next board meeting presenting with them updates on the junior high feasibility study. And they, um, they actually have now looked at and taken our bond survey because there was comments in there to coordinate it in. Master plan and some, and some estimated costing. And that project is a little, as you know, a little further along than the high school project, but we also plan to talk about that on our April 18th board meeting. And as we look at the sports or the aquatic and sports complex there and some testing that we're going through. So good news, we'll hear some updates on the April um, 18th meeting. And uh, pardon our desk is our sign and slogan. So um, that is our update. Any questions? <clears throat> Any questions? I have one quick one. If everything goes perfect with the fencing and the bidding and the processes and question. everything else, which it, will. which it will, when's the, when would the first Shovel be in the ground. You know, I would really like to go back and tell you on April 18th, if that's okay. Okay. <laughs> because I want to make sure that we don't overcommit and underdeliver. Number one, as you know, the scope of work and the bidding docs are complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the project size, the pool of qualified contractors. We know it's going to be popular because the economics of the bidding process, which I hope now has come down, that Casa Cola, COI things. So hopefully we get some good, pro and then we need to qualify those bidders to make sure they're indeed capable of doing the project. And then we have to actually maintain and estimate a bid pro protest period, because there's by law you can protest bid if you feel like you didn't have a fair shake at it. And then we'll develop a timeline. Um, so I would like to get a little bit back to you, but let's just call it the end of summer. As you know, we got a lot of projects on this summer, but we'll be moving forward. Okay, thanks. Yeah. No more questions, thank you. All right, next up, action items. <clears throat> Superintendent's department, no items. Human resources, nothing. Educational services, 2024-27 award E-rate bid to AT&T. Do I have a motion? So moved, Miller. Second. Planters. Any questions? Eleonora? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 5-0. B, purchase of iPads to replace aging units. Do I have a motion? Gail? Second. Chris? Any questions? Eleonora? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? <clears throat> Passes 5-0. Business services, second interim report as required by Ed Code. Do I have a motion? So moved, Miller. Second. Landers? Any questions? Eleonora? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 5-0. B, tra annual transportation plan. Do I have a motion? So moved. Chris? Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, Eleanor? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 5-0. C, agreement to purchase trauma kits as required by Ed Code 32045. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Second. Oh, no. Go ahead. Chris can have it. Chris? <clears throat> Any questions? Trustees, if I can interject on yep. this purchase. We are, um, in order to um, bring down the cost of these, of these kits, and as you've heard in the past, we belong to a joint power of the 30 JPA for our workers' comp. So us, along with Ocean View, um, OC, 
Department of Ed in Laguna, and the four of us are have pooled our purchasing strength mm -hmm. to drive down these price of these units as though it was one purchase. But we're not doing one purchase because we're all public agencies and we can't do that. Yeah, yeah. But the vendor has accepted four different POs. So this pricing is on condition of the other three delivering, and they're going through the same similar conversations as we are tonight at different times. So I just thought I'd bring that up in case something happens that it doesn't move forward, but we should <coughs> be okay with this purchase as we move forward with these one-time restricted funds. Thank you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Eleonora. Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 5-0. Resolution 24-04, Resolution of the Board of Education of the Braille Olinda Unified School District requests the county treasurer to make temporary transfers of monies. Do I have a motion? So moved. Flanders? Second, Miller. Miller. Any questions? No? Rick, do you want to? I'll be happy to I just give you the 30,000 foot level. Please. Um, this is a resolution <coughs> through the, the um, counties and supervisors have um, arranged a financing vehicle for districts, um, including community colleges, that might be, uh, experience a cash flow problem. And it was kind of born years ago. And it's a five-year renewal from a previous resolution. Um, and though we do not anticipate in Brad any use of going to bridge our cash flow, <clears throat> it is prudent in this case to get ahead of it in case the state starts deferring some dollars. And there is a vehicle called the Trans where you can go out and get a loan and get your receipts, but you do pay it back. You do pay it back any loan within the requirements. But this is a much cheaper and quicker vehicle for doing that. So this is a resolution to set that up for that term. Obviously, we have no um, anticipation of ever utilizing it, but if we had to, you know, the, the worst time to ask for money is when you really need it. This is just getting anticipation of the state's fiscal issue in an out year. So. Thank Any you questions? For being, I just thank you for being ahead of it. <laughs> but it's there. All right. Um, it's a roll call vote. Uh, Eleonora? Aye. Okay. And then Annette, you want to do the rest? Uh, Trustee Becerra? Aye. Trustee Flanders? Aye. Trustee Lyons? Aye. Trustee Miller Aye. and Trustee Ruiz. Aye. Resolution passes five to zero. Great. Board calendar. Thank you very much, President Ruiz. Our next board <coughs> meeting will be April 18th after spring break, but I'd like to highlight some other important dates on our calendar through the end of the school year. We have our DLI information night, so that's our dual language program at Aravista, will be March 14th. So we had two info nights. This is the second one. It'll be at 5 p.m., followed by an open house at Falcon Academy at 6 p.m. So we have this information um, available on our website if families are interested in visiting our schools during open house, but five o'clock for DLI, six for fast. Our best track meet is this Saturday pending the fields. So um, I don't know if Jeff is still here. He probably is. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jeff. He will let, he will let us know tomorrow. So I, I appreciate you asking that question, Paul. Um, they'll inspect the fields. I've already mentioned spring break. Love Brea, April 27th. We're gathering projects, and Jeff and Rick will let us know what's approved for that, and we can sign up to volunteer on the <coughs> district. It's a great event. Followed by employee recognition, May 1st. HR is working on that with Nutrition Services. Last day of school is May 31st. It's hard to believe we're almost there. And then, as Diana Maldonado mentioned, the golf tournament with BEF is June 3rd. So those are some important dates for your calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and next we'll do, uh, there's no continuation of closed session and we will go to board comments. Do you have anything on order? Um, I'll just say that it was really moving to hear all like the personal stories from the public comments tonight. And I think it really goes to show the quality of our staff and teachers at all our sites. And it's really amazing to see what an impact they've really had on all our students throughout the years. Dina? Okay. Um, this is a little long. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to Country Hills and Mariposa for having me last week. Um, I will say that um, the sixth grade 
social science, social studies Egypt project is amazing. So they showed it a little bit in pictures <coughs> tonight, but seeing it in person is just impressive. So it's definitely, I hope it's something that they keep for open houses. Um, okay, so here's my speech. BOUSD does a lot with a little. We have award-winning schools. Robotics is offered at elementary, junior high, and high school. We have two electives at the at Brea Junior High. We have seven career pathways at BOHS, as well as 26 AP courses. Canyon High School was awarded the California Model Continuation High School two years ago. We offer award-winning performing arts and music, theater, singing at the elementary, junior high, and high school. We offer Brea Online Academy, as well as independent study at Brea Junior High and the high school. BOH, or BOUSD offers dual immersion, science and technology, and career exploration magnet school at the elementary level. We also offer three languages at Brea Junior High and five languages at BOHS. Canyon High School offers the HAL Print Shop career pathway to learn valuable life skills in the printing industry. We provide music to fourth through sixth graders, and we also provide the AVID education program at the elementary, junior high, and high school level which prepares students for the college and eligibility uh, and success. Last year, BOUSD was a Golden Bell District with our CTE pathways. And lastly, in 2023, our superintendent won superintendent of the year in her first full year at the position. We do not get a lot of funding and everybody in this room knows that, but I just wanna take the time to thank our teachers, our entire staff, um, the admin team, cabinet, our board, um, and especially our families who choose Brea, because this is just tough times, but I know together we will all get through this, and it's because of our students that we're all gonna work together. So that is it. It took about two weeks to finally get this to come through, and <coughs> it came through my brain today. I was kind of getting nervous on <laughs> what I was gonna say, but it finally came through, and it flowed out so easily once it finally came through, when you, you, know, you kind of just focus on the good and be proud of it. It's okay to be proud of it, and we're gonna get through this, so um, so just thank you to everybody. So that's it. Thank you, Gail. Anything? Yeah, um, it was a tough night. You know, it's it's it is compelling and it's um, it's just hard to hear that we can't do all that we want to do, what we would like to do, and it is because of our funding model, and that's been said over and over and over again. But just to hear, I mean, if anything you can go away from tonight's thinking and seeing is that our parents see our teachers as well and our staff and they know how valuable they are and we know how valuable they are. Um, but I do hope that our community can come together because again, one of the reasons we continue to struggle is a lot of our, our money goes to facilities to, to take care of what we have to. And we just, that, that pot of money is dwindling fast and has been for the last 14 years I've been on the board. So I hope that that same, um, I just hope that people will be, continue to support and to try and help us find other sources of funding. Because, I mean, I think you know the reality is, is we can advocate all we want to the state of California. The funding model for us is not gonna change because there's a pot of money and it's a big pie. And in order for us to get more of the pie, another district has to give up something to give to us. That's not gonna happen. It's never happened. And I, it's just a reality check on you know, where we stand. I wish we could get more money out of that pie, but um, we're a small district and a lot of other districts have a lot more power and voice than we do. So the only way we can ease the burden is to stop draining our funds with having to spend on our facilities what we'd like to spend on our staff and our teachers. And you know, I, I know I, I'm a <laughs> been beating this gong for a long time, and I'm tired of hearing it. But it is one of the only ways that we can <clears throat> that we can help ourselves. And so we need the we need our parent support, we need our teacher support. We need our community support. They move here because of the schools, but they have to understand that we do not have the, the money that we need to support and continue to do the things that we'd like to do. And um, I will end on a note of positivity, <laughs> and that is 
I sit on the oversight committee for the North Orange County Community College um, bond, which I have to tell you is hard to sit there because I would just take one of their projects and give the money to us. Um, uh, gosh, it's, it really is hard because they, it's over a $300 million bond. They're about halfway through. The, project that, that the projects they've been able to do, almost every single one of them has matching state dollars. So you know, you see that they, it's a $29 million project and $22 million of that is state funded sometimes. Last night, it was, it was just, it's hard to, to see that money that we weren't eligible to get until you put some money in. So, um, but you can do so much when you have the ability to do those things. So I do hope that we'll get to that place where the community will support what we need because um, the stories, it's just, con it's gonna continue, and unfortunately. But, oh, I was gonna say something positive, I forgot. Um, one of the bids that they had put out uh, was like a $29 million project, and it came in $4 million under their projected costs. So the lowest bid was actually that far below. They still have to wiggle out, make sure they're bidding on the right stuff, but that's the first time that's happened. So maybe there's hope there. So anyway, I, it's just, it's, um, we have a wonderful community, and we have great schools, and we have great staff and teachers and all of you, and uh, I hope that we can get somewhere in this next year with some more funding sources. <coughs> Thanks. Kitty. I wrote something down, I wrote a little something. Um, I do understand about us being a little district, by the way, I didn't write this part down, um, but we still have to advocate. We still have to like let them know oh, that absolutely. it's not working. You have to keep yeah. banging the gong. Yeah, um, you know. Otherwise, we're not doing anything. I don't know, it just feels like we're not doing anything. Well, okay, so what I wrote down was a little bit in line with what Brenda was read without even knowing that um, you were gonna speak about relationships. I had the same thing. I've just been thinking all week um, about, about what we're going through, we, everyone, and um, the relationship part of it. But I, I wrote it down so that I just don't drift, but I'm already drifting. Um, so first, this is what I wrote. First of all, having the teachers and classified staff <clears throat> showing unity and support of each other has been impressive and inspiring. I always encourage people to speak up. Our job is done in public, and the public has a right to speak. And I know how hard it is to speak in front of your peers, um, but it helps us to see the different perspectives. I mean, I wish they could all like hear what we're saying afterwards because we can't, but pass it on. <laughs> um, it's, but it is intimidating. And if I'm being honest to me, I, it's so funny because some of you spoke, the, the parents spoke about superheroes. And to me, that first week that everyone came was looking out like movie stars. It was like I saw everybody I've known my whole life, it seems, <coughs> and our heroes of our district. And um, I've known most of them for 20 years out there. And um, imagine looking out and seeing all of the different people who had a direct influence on my kids, your kids, your kids, your kids, your kids, you. Um, um, and they've been there uh, to help raise our kids with us. I mean, probably most of the people in this room, <laughs> not now, but then, um, <laughs> most of you, no, um, have actually been with our kids as many hours as we have every day. And um, been there through the the bad times with us, with me, with my husband, when we had issues with kids or, you know, things at school like we all do, and also been there for accomplishments during the good times. Um, my kids have chosen their own career paths because of some of these exact people in that room. All, all three of my youngest kids chose that their career path because of not just a teacher, but a sort a certified staff member specifically who said you're amazing at math. So it's all of them. Um, and hard work and dedication has never been in question for our teachers. I'm sad that they're questioning it now because of this. Be and for classified, it's never been in question for any of us. Um, in fact, I'm willing to bet that the five of us sitting here are here because of the love for the district and because of the people in this room. The relationships we cherish in this district are what made it what it made it what it's meant to be to us and our families. Um, that's what makes this situation so hard. 
We're in the middle of a necessary process. The process is temporary, but the relationships and feelings when this is over will be lasting. That worries me the most. The words we speak in person to each other and on social media matter to the process. I want to stop by saying that, first of all, every single week, all of our staff members and the parents tonight were so respectful and so genuine. It's never been like that when we've had issues where we filled the house, right? And so I do appreciate that. That's not who I'm talking to. But there are people that aren't, that are feeding into drama out there, and that's not helping anyone. <coughs> Um, so not asking us to read to the kids this week or come to classrooms or maybe not even waving when I walked in this room. Some people wouldn't even smile at me. Um, definitely hurts our feelings. We're human. It's not hard to take it personal. I just worry about the permanent damage caused by some of those decisions. Our district's made up of professionals. I have faith that we can work through a process together and come out stronger instead of damaged. We're all on the same side. You hear it here. None of us are here for the money, for sure. None of us are here for the money. We are here for the people, the kids, and adults, and for the community we love being a part of. The kids in our district have the same needs as kids in other districts and deserve to get the same funding. Our facilities deserve to be maintained. Our certified and classified staff have the same challenges and deserve the same pay as staff in other districts. It's a fight we've been fighting and seems to have fallen on deaf ears at the state. There's nothing for this district to gain by not paying everything we can afford to pay. It's not something we just say, it's reality. It's 100% not fair. We all know that, and I already said how bad we need your help to try. Thank you, I, somebody texted. Is it one of you guys? Okay, but I, I didn't read it during. Um, but I do want to say thank you. I want to leave um, on a positive note too, um, because Cabinet, you guys get slammed <laughs> like first, even before us sometimes out there in the public because it's easy to <coughs> when not everyone knows you or can get to you as easily as they can, maybe like our neighbors can for us. And I wish everyone knew how hard you worked on all of this, weekends and nights. I know that. I, how hard and sad you are as well. I wish everyone knew your heart like we do um, and your work ethic. It matches ours of our staff. So that's why you're all here. And um, so I know it isn't easy. And I know you love our district and you love the people in it. Um, and I said all that kind of, um, but thank you for staying professional and um, solution oriented and keeping us focused and informed. And um, I know you'll continue to do that. And so I actually had said, the same to the union leadership. I didn't read it. I started to go off topic. But I said to the cabinet and union leadership, it's been interesting, right, to be in, um, I didn't want to say a war, but to be in this situation, but to be, be. Um, at odds. To, you're at odds on one topic, right? But you're not in everything else. And you're meeting and you're trying and you're working together and you're nice. You're kind. So uh, that's appreciated. So anyway. I said a lot, but I, I felt like quiet for too long. You know I don't do that. And then, so I just want to remind you, temporary process, permanent outcome, though, later. And and I will get with you, and I'm hoping Boda reaches out to you, and we'll organize something. And Gil's right. I can't promise you anything, but our name will be in the inbox of <laughs> the governor. So neener, neener, I don't know. So anyways, that's all I had to say. Christopher. So as Lisa mentioned earlier tonight, um, we lost a longtime employee in the district. For those of you who know Joanne, Joanne worked in child development her entire career for 36 years. Joanne was a product of Brea Schools. She went to Aero Vista, she went to the junior high, she went to the high school. And then I worked alongside her for eight years at Aero Vista. And it's so crazy, because we all have work family, to think eight years was such a long time, but it went by in a flash, right? Um, I saw her daughter grow up when she was at Aravista, and she actually was, her daughter was my nanny for two years during COVID with my own kids, and so my kids took it very hard as well. Um, and for those of you, you know, Bray is intimate, right? Child development is a very intimate department. For those of you who don't know, every single person that's there, 
now was there when I was there and before me. And so um, everyone knew Joanne, even throughout the district. Everyone had a Joanne story. Joanne drove me crazy, don't get me wrong. I loved her so much, but she drove me crazy in the best way, right? Joanne actually told me to rehire Noel when Noel came looking for a job. Um, but, you know, how many Joannes do we have out there? We have a lot, right, of our longtime employees who have dedicated their whole life to the district. And it's just so important for us to recognize everybody and for us to, um, you know, just let people know, like, how great they're doing at all times. Um, one of my last conversations I had with Joanne, I went to visit her, and we were talking, and she was like, you know, I used to look at you, and your wheels would be spinning. Like, I could just see you, like, going to give me work to do, like something different. And I was like, yeah, Joanne, I had the ideas, but you're the one who went out and did it. And you made child development a better place for kids. And you made an impact on our kids. And so uh, she's missed. She's going to be missed. Penny and I got to go visit her together. And it's just hard. It's a hard loss, the school district. So just wanted people to know, and, you know, go out and tell people thank you. Tell people, because like, we have hard working staff here who make an impact, so. Uh, there will be, yes, uh, details coming. Um, she planned everything before she died, her and her daughter. And so uh, she shared, you know, some of that with us. She was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in October. She was supposed to live about two months, but she lasted until March 1st. And she mentioned many times it was because of her child development family who would come and visit her every week. So we're going to miss Joanne, and thank you for coming. Thanks. With that, I'm going to close tonight's meeting in honor of Joanne Warren and Paulo Navo, two of our employees who passed away recently. Good night. <laughs>